Boom, we made it. What is up, everybody? Welcome <sighs> to BAF. Hello, hello. I was like, waiting for some like applause. That I didn't get <laughs> no applause this time. Usually I get applause. <laughs> no, you got yawning. Oh, well, that doesn't help. <laughs> What's up, everybody? We are uh, doing a... Tits and dicks, man. Tits and dicks. Oh, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. So today for our show... You're talking, so you're saying something. Oh, funny. We have Ragnar, Same, we have Goot, and we have Adam. We are going to be doing the movie Troy, released May 14th, 2004. Director's Cut released September 18th, 2007. <laughs> Directed by Wolfgang Peterson. For the movies that he's done, we have, we've got some great movies here. I'm sure everybody's seen The NeverEnding Story. I'm sure we all grew up with that one. Uh, Dust Boot, that's a great movie yep. right there. Uh, Air Force One, which we actually did a show on. Mm -hmm. Poseidon, the remake. Uh, yeah. The Perfect Storm, which is another episode that Ragnar did. Um, then we did. Uh, then other movies he's done is Outbreak, the Good classic sci-fi Enemy Mine, Good and one. the Clint Eastwood movie In the Line of Fire. So he's actually done nice. some great movies. Um, the score for this movie was done by James Horner, and uh, the movie Troy had a Rotten Tomato score of fifty-three percent, based on two hundred twenty-nine reviews. The audience score is higher at seventy-three percent, based on twenty two hundred fifty thousand ratings. Um, it got rotten, but from a user score, it actually did pretty well. Uh, the movie Troy had a production budget of approximately 185 million. It grossed 133 million in the United States and Canada, and 364 million in other territories, with a worldwide gross of 497 million dollars. So it, it made its money. It did a good job. I remember when this came out; it was a, it was a decent hit. And it's you know having a you know a lot of great actors on there. You got Brad Pitt. You got Brian Cox. Uh, here's the actors that we got. We got Brad Pitt as Achilles. We got Eric Bana as Hector, which I don't really see much of Eric Bana that much anymore. Uh, Orlando Bloom as Paris. Diane Kruger as Helen. Brian Cox as Agamemnon. We have Sean Ben as Odysseus. Brendan Gleeson as Menelaus. Do you remember how to say it, right? Menelaus. Is it Menelaus? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, then we have Peter O'Toole as Priam. We have Rose Byrne as Bri Brius. We have Saffron Burroughs as Andromachi. I, I'm, I'm sure that's wrong. I don't know how to how to say it. Did you copy and paste or type? This I copied out? and pasted. This is actually from what okay. you told me. The AI. You told me to the AI Ragnar? this time. I used it. What was that? I, I did not. Why well, try to blame Ragnar for? No, no, no. I said he gave me <laughs> a credit since here's what you should do is just press on AI where the cast is and it'll print it out for you. And that's what I did instead uh. of me typing it out. Uh, we have Tyler Maine as Ajax. I'm sure you know who Tyler Maine is, right? Uh, Who's in a movie that you just saw yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Played uh, Sabretooth in the X-Men. He also mm -hmm. played uh, Michael Myers in the two Rob Zombie uh, remake of Halloween. Uh, James Cosmo as Glossius and Nigel Terry as Archtopolemus. Archtopolemus. See, this is embarrassing. I can't say these Greek names, but I'm sure you guys... It's one of the uh, the religious dudes that were with Priam. Other movies to come out around the same month. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're laughing at me right now. Hmm. Van Helsing. <laughs> and actually, we have uh, New York Minute, which I don't know what the fuck that is. I think that's the uh, Olsen twins, I believe. Uh, Shrek 2. Hold on. What? <laughs> you don't know what it is, and you think it's with the Olsen twins? I'm looking it up. Said. I think that's what it is. Uh, what was I that, New York that. Minute? I didn't even read that. Fucker! I you have it on AI. your goddamn screen! It was from the AI! I, I, didn't, I just looked at the title. I'm sorry. Watch your cup. Yeah, I know. Almost spilled <laughs> it on my uh, thing. 
Then we have the, the Dan Dan twins Mar are on the movie. Read the New York Minute. Right. God right. damn it. Dan for tomorrow, a disaster film directed by Roland Emmerich. And then we have Breaking All the Rules, a romantic comedy with Jamie Foxx and Gabriel Union. Uh, New York Minute, comedy featuring Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Shrek 2 re released the popular animated sequel by DreamWorks. And then you have Van Helsing, an action horse film starring Hugh Jackman and Kate Beckinsale. There you go. There, right. see, now you didn't fuck it up. Yeah. Good job. Appreciate it. Anyways, the drink we are trying is courtesy of Snow because she actually went overseas to, uh, where did she go? She went to, uh, from Barrel Age Chicks. I know, I was going to get that. I was going to get that. I was going to say that. I just wasn't going to ask I don't you. believe you on that one. Oh, I would. You can't read a teleprompter. I didn't finish it yet. So what, actually, where did she go? Europe. You she went to Greece. She went to Greece. She went to Ithaca. Italy. Yeah. Uh, um, Croatia. Croatia, thank you. Yeah. That, I didn't think of that one. So she had uh, <laughs> nine ports. Yeah. She was over there for about like a week and a half, I believe. Two weeks. Yeah. And she said that she would get me the drink of the show, which I actually got, which she bought, Canava Santorini. Follows a tra traditional slow procedure to prepare ouzo in handmade Greek copper Olympic still. The superior quality of Canava Santori, Torini, Uzo is characterized by the aroma and the taste of the currents of Santa Torini's Aristico, saffron, and anise. What is that? Those are spices. Bless you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, uh, there's actually even a thing that we're going to say before we drink this. But also, Goot also brought a drink to the table also for this episode. So, Goot, what are, we drink what are you drinking on your end? I just got a simple bottle from Italy, some Moscato di Asti. So. Oh, Nice. Love me some Moscato. So. Okay. Okay. So uh, the word that we're supposed to say, go ahead, Ragnar. Fuck you, Ron. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what fuck you want? Why are you asking me to say it? Because I forgot. <laughs> what I was oh, oh, yeah. Oh, this is the motherfucker who I told, play the goddamn clip. No, I know it. I just did. Play the fucking somehow. clip. No, I, I, I got I, it. It's fine. No, play the clip. Fine. Plays the clip. I got it. Don't worry. Okay, well. So what the fuck is it? <sighs> All right, well, I guess I'm gonna have to play this clip. So I'm not getting up. Uh, I'm not getting. Oh, play it. Punish for this. <laughs> Stimmy Hiamas. <laughs> so that is what we say when we drink this drink. Stimmy Hiamas. Is that still wrong? Apparently, I still said it wrong. Nope. <laughs> is that right? No. Nope. Cheers. <laughs> Skull. <laughs> Let it rip. Yeah, that's pure, good, and plenty. That's what I remember when we had this. Yep. I don't remember what show we did. We had Uzo before. I don't know. Stupid. But that is like pure, good, and plenty. Like, that is pure licorice. That is good. Because I love licorice. So, I'm, I, oh, man, this is really good, actually. And what's really cool about this is that when you pour the drink in there, it's a clear color in the bottle. But when it's on ice, it fogs up. It gets like this cloudy look into it. Which is actually really interesting. It's good. I enjoy it. It's I don't know. You want to go first? Well, just... <laughs> what? I'm curious. <laughs> You're curious about? <laughs> go fucking find out. <laughs> One. Welcome to the shit show. <laughs> My shows are always a shit show. You a little nervous, oh, every guy? <laughs> no, I'm not always nervous me. at all. I'm just so. All right. Knowing yeah. knowing that we did Uzo before. Right, on a different show. Right. Why pick it again and not do like a wine from over there? She asked me. Okay, that's the thing. I, I, I know she asked, but I'm asking you why. That's the thing. She asked me what I wanted, and I said I want a look. look uh, you want a wine or a liquor? I said I want a liquor. But you know what? You're buying it. Pick whatever you want. She picked that. You that's said liquor. You she said you wanted liquor. You don't want a wine. Yeah, but then I also said that you have choice, and she picked this. Did you confuse your words with liquor and licorice? No, liquor. I said liquor. But she okay. she, she asked me that. I said I want a liquor, but <sighs> you're what? It's in the text. Why are you giving up? I'm, dude, this is a simple question. I'm no, asking because no, no. I'm curious. I gave her the choice. I gave her the choice. Hey, you're buying it. You get whatever you want. And I'll go with whatever you get. Okay. But she did ask me, and I said liquor. But then she said, you know what? It's your choice. You buy whatever you want. I was expecting her to bring home a wine, actually. 
And then I thought that wine would be better because that's what they drink in this movie, actually, especially in the beginning when they're uh, when Paris and uh, Hector are with uh, um, um, what's his name, uh, Menelaus, basically. So I don't know. She went with Uzo, so I give it a two. I think it's good. I really enjoy it. I actually like the, the licorice flavor in it. I really like how the glass fogs up. It's good cold. I mean, what I read online is Uzo is supposed to be uh, supposed to be on ice. Uh, it could be neat, but it's better on ice. So that's why I've served it on ice here. So I don't know. I, I give it a two. It's good. Like I said, I, I like licorice flavor. I, I remember Absinthe having more of a licorice flavor, too. So licorice does. flavor doesn't bother me. Also, uh, uh, Yeager's uh, licorice flavor. But this, what? to me, is more. What would you say? What would you say? Licorice. No. No. Jaeger. Oh. Jaeger. Yeah, Jaeger's okay. got a licorice taste. Sounded like sort of different. <laughs> I'm not saying. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm not saying. That. I, I, did I, what did I say? Did I say it wrong? You no. almost said the N word there for a second. Yeah. I did not say that. That's what it sounded yeah. like. Okay, well, that's not what I was trying to say. That's why I asked you what you said. I said Jaeger. I heard it too, Ragnar. I was like, oh, Thank my you. God. <laughs> Wait, I'll have to go back in my recording and make sure I didn't say it, apparently. Unbelievable. Anyways, I give it a two. It's good. I think it's really good. It's refreshing. Uh, it's great. Ice cold. Um, like I said, it looks good. It tastes good. Two. It's good. And I completely forgot that Uzo had a licorice flavor. I did not remember it having... I, I thought it was like a vodka or something like that. Because like I said, we had Uzo before, but it was a yeah, long time ago. So It was very surprising. Um, i trying to remember what Stu brought it for. I don't fucking remember. It was very surprising, though, when, he, when we first had it. And... This reminds, obviously, it's the same thing. So, yeah, you know, I now I remember what the fuck it tasted like. Um, I'll give it a two. Okay. It's tasty. It's light. I, you think it's refreshing? I'm, I'm, I'm not the most favorite of um, black licorice. Yeah. Which is what this tastes like. Does it remind you of Good and Plenty's, like the Good and Plenty candies? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and even those aren't my favorite. But, yeah. You know. Well, licorice is not for everybody. A lot of people don't like the flavor of licorice, so. I mean, the it, does, you give it, it doesn't two. bother me. Yeah. It's just not my favorite taste. Right. You know. Um, but I still give it a two, though. It's still tasty. Goop, what's your drink taste like? Moscato. It, it's actually a, a, a very good blend of, like, it's like a very light wine, but it tastes like me to me. So I, really? I love getting this. They have it available at Costco. It's only like ten bucks, then nine ninety nine. So uh, it's very light. It's like a good summer drink, but it's like a, it's Moscato, so they're light. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a two here. I, I love this this drink. Awesome. So that's something you, is that something you normally get a lot over at Costco. Well, yes. And this is an Italian wine, you said. Yep, made in Italia. Oh, nice, nice. Made in Italia. <laughs> it's a product of a product of Italia, Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's cool that you got to bring something over for the table. I'm sorry, Adam. Adam couldn't be here to uh, try, but uh, Adam's not really a big drinker, anyways. So I'm sure he's uh, not minding it, anyways. Oh, but... that's fine. I'm I'm drinking my Pure Life water from Walmart. So. <laughs> <laughs> Give a good review of that. <laughs> nice and refreshing. <laughs> but I'm actually curious. Are you a big fan of licorice flavor? No. Oh, see, so, no. you, so you're one of those ones that don't like licorice. Yeah, no. Have you ever had a Jaeger before? Like back jelly beans get tossed out. Oh, yeah. man, those are the best jelly beans. Yeah. My favorite ones. Over the back of the shoulder. Yeah. Oh God, I love black licorice. <laughs> I, I, I think black licorice is great. I, I, it's a very <laughs> unique taste, and like I said, that's why I like Jaeger Bomb so much. Um, but this, like I said, this is more of a. I guess this is a more of a a more rich flavor of licorice, but like I said, with the fogginess of the, I, I love how the fucking uh, the drink fogs up when it uh, hits the ice. How it just gets all cloudy and everything. Bring, bring, the ice actually brings out all the. The flavor of the um, ingredients. Yeah. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So we got two, two, and you gave yours a two. So pretty good. And Adam uh, gave his a two. <laughs> oh, of the water. You oh, said wow, yeah. all around, man. <laughs> I'm happy it wasn't great value water. water. What was that? I'm happy it wasn't great value water. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Nope. Wasn't great value. Ooh, great value water tastes like that. You know, the thing is, <laughs> water does have taste, and. I know. Like People water. say that I. No, this is not. There is differences in water. You know, there's could be a hardness in it, or it could be very soft, or like a lot of times it has to do with the container that it's in. I like a lot. Yeah, you're water. tasting the plastics or the metal of whatever it's in. Yeah. That's why I like Liquid Death. I think Liquid Death is better. I I really like canned water. You like the taste of the metal. 
It doesn't really taste like metal. I don't know what it you're does. all talking about. You guys are you got weird taste buds because I don't taste any metal. Just like you, would you rather have a Pepsi in a can or would you rather have a Pepsi in a bottle? A glass cup, preferably with ice. That'd be, yeah, that'd be more preferred. Yeah. No. I can get to that one. <laughs> a lot of people like can go to more, but a lot of people just like when you go to McDonald's, everybody says that the McDonald's Coca Cola is the best tasting Coca Cola compared to the can and the bottle. For some yeah, reason, it's zero. I don't go to McDonald's. I don't. I, I know, but I mean, so. I'm just. It's weird. Uh, people have different flavors on different things. So, anyways, that's the uh, end of our first drinking segment. So we're gonna go ahead and take a break, and we will be right back. That's the end of the show, folks. Yeah, now. we're over right, there. Guys. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey there, it's the Barrel Age Chicks. I'm Sammy. I'm Snow. I'm Crystal, often called Mouse, and I'm here too. Yay! And then we also have Yen and Harley, who sadly are not with us, but that's okay. We're here to talk to you about our podcast. Woo! Tune in because it's just, it's a lot of fun. And you get to hear the chick side of things. You get to BS about movies and drinking and life and momming. Lots and we're of good. laughing. Lots of laughing. I laugh. But it's great. Yes. We have is. finished our first season. And we're starting our second season. Woo! Good Lord. 2024, here we come. I know, enjoy it. Join us on all of the platforms. Hear them talk and me listen. You talk. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook. Pretty much anywhere you can hear voices on a phone. And yeah, so give us a follow, check us out. Watch us give Ron aneurysms. This is the best part. <laughs> and thanks for listening. We will talk to you soon. What is up, everybody? We are back with our show for the movie Troy, which I asked everybody to watch the director's cut. And I don't know if anybody had time to watch the theatrical cut or if they remember it, but in my opinion, the, did you watch the director's cut, Goot? Yes, you said Okay, too. and Adam, you watched the director's cut? Yes, I did. And I know you did because yeah. I gave you the copy and everything else. So Yep, but I got something to say. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> so I asked you earlier what? Why you picked this? The director's cut? No, no. Why you? Why you picked Uzo drink. and not a wine? Why? Did, I didn't pick it. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. No, you didn't pick Uzo, but you said that you um, preferred. You actually left it up to her mm -hmm. to pick. Yeah, because okay. she was buying it. Yeah. So she sent me a screenshot of the message. And what it show? Liquor. I don't like wine. Yes. And then I also said right afterwards mm -hmm. that it's up to you. You can pick whatever you want. Why did you cop? Why did you uh, let, double I'll do you yourself? Pick. You're buying. You're Ex getting credit. Exactly. Liquor. Not a fan of wine. Yeah. I just gave my op my opinion, yeah. but she, I let her pick. Okay. You said that line. Then you contradicted yourself. Uh-huh. I changed my mind right after. <laughs> says, you know what? It's your up to you. You can pick it. So what's but, the problem? But you, we're honestly, confused. It's a mystery. I wouldn't. Be, I wouldn't. Be, I was because honest. because I asked you, and you said I left it up to her. Right after why she did, said that. No, I, I I asked, why'd you pick this, or why'd you pick a liquor and not a wine, and you said that you left it up to her. I left it up to her right after yes. I said that. Yes. yes. Yeah. I changed my mind in the mid Texas. It's up to no, you. No, no, no. You can I know. Do that. I know. But you you omitted that when you were speaking about it. Oh, I didn't mean to. I, if I did that, I didn't mean to. It was just <gasps> wrong choice of words. Uh, Is that uh, honesty I, right there? Uh huh. It's a you guys want me to spin the wheel? Oh, I think it is. You can spin the wheel. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Will right here. Y'all vote. <laughs> Go ahead and vote. You won't spin it. <laughs> no, you got to vote. I'm not doing this crap again where I'm just taking the wheel. I've gone through this so many fucking times where you guys. <laughs> Have to vote this time. It's Stu's main approach. So you know, you always do it without us voting. I'm like, fuck. He's well, right. Yeah, y'all can vote. Okay. I vote aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Well, the, you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Let's see if we can get this here. Perfect in the cam? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Don't break the fucking thing. Ooh. What is it? Hold on. Daddy picks. Nah, no. That's a fucking cock shot. That's a cock shot. <laughs> Tilted to <laughs> the right. It's, it's cock shot. It's a cock yeah. shot. God damn it. Mm. I don't even have the cock anymore. <laughs> oh, it's right there. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. 
That's a soundbite. Right, right, I'm getting, you're, getting the one, yeah. you're the one that gave the vote. You go ahead and pour my cup. Some, that didn't even sound right saying somebody that. Somebody please either. grab that soundbite. Oh, oh I, I'm marking that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what the fuck? What do you mean you're going to mark that? Your ass. No, you, you did realize what you said before that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Funnel? Huh? Uh, yeah, right in the, the little drawer, there's a little small funnel in there. There should be a uh, funnel in there. All right, so anyways, we're going to be talking about the, the movie Troy, of course, uh, which, uh, first question to ask you guys, uh, when was the first time you guys saw this? Did any of you guys see this in the theater, the theatrical cut? I did. Oh, I really? A, you did? Okay. I was a junior in high school when I saw this mess in theaters. Um, saw this mess in theaters? <laughs> yeah, it's um, I I love I love Greek mythology and like this you know following Achilles and you know that yeah uh, mythology I I saw it like, I I don't know I was never the biggest fan of Brad Pitt and uh, I don't know is this one of those movies I just had to see in the big theater in the theaters because it's an epic war almost I'm surprised and, uh, because you like Brad Pitt in Seven I did but there you was didn't a like while though there was a while oh. though I did, I did not like him as an actor it took a while for me to break that that stigma. Yeah. Now with Shia LaBeouf, I I fucking hate that dude. If I ever saw that kid, <laughs> you yeah, you've always said how much you hate Shia. You you can't stand that motherfucker. So, but yeah, I was a junior in high school when I saw it in theaters. Adam, how old were you? you saw this? <laughs> <laughs> More, better question is how old are my kids? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean. I saw this. This was probably one of those movies where we had a free pay channel at the time, and it came on uh, oh, okay. HBO or something like that. Yeah. Um, saw it, saw it at home. Um, so it was that's that's where I saw it. I, I didn't see it in the theater. Oh, interesting. So, um, but yeah, what was it? Two, what'd you say? Two thousand four. Two thousand four is when it came on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, let me to make sure I got the right date here. It was uh, May fourteenth, two thousand four. Yeah, yeah. So my son wasn't quite five, and my daughter was. One. Wow. <laughs> uh, I saw this. I believe I bought the DVD at that time when it came out. I remember seeing the theatrical cut and then the director's cut. When I heard that, I'm a big fan of director's cuts. I always like to see what another vision of the movie is. So when the vi uh, director's cut came out, I bought that on uh, HD DVD when it came out because I, I was one of those. I was one of those HD DVD guys thinking that that was going to be the winner compared to Blu-ray. <laughs> Uh, what the fuck is this concoction? All right, so cock caution. Uh, let's see. But oh man, this looks interesting. Okay, but yeah, I saw it and uh, I enjoyed the director's cut. But I did notice some differences that I did not like, mainly with the music. There are some things in the music I did not like, but overall, I thought the extra added scenes added to the movie. The battle scenes were a lot more gorier and a lot more brutal. Uh, the ending when they're um, you know attacking Troy. And going when the gates are open, there's a lot of scenes in there that wasn't in the theatrical cut. You know, there were some little dialogue scenes with uh, Priam and uh, Helen of Troy, and you know, some other stuff like that. Um, added dialogue, but other than that, I enjoyed it better. But yeah, there is some things I don't like about it that I do like about the theatrical cut when it comes to the score. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, maybe I'm just afraid to try this drink out. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and try this punishment shot that Ragnar gave me. You want to tell me what it is, or am I drinking it first? Taste it first. <sighs> okay. Did you, did you pee in I, there? It looks like fucking urine. <laughs> it, I was asking it for a funnel. It looks so. like homeless man's piss. I mean, seriously. I... I'm uh, Okay, well, I think this is a first for our YouTube on the cock shot, so here we go. Put it to your lips. Bottoms up. Cheers. Don't choke on it. Ooh, good sound. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't bad. No? Cool. Actually, that wasn't bad. What is it? Crown Royal Black. Okay. Uh, Bacardi. Okay. Um, Interesting. Sour Apple Pucker. That's... I, I don't taste that. And I got diluted. Damn. Uh, the banana stuff you got up there. Actually, you were pretty easy with me on that one. Actually, it wasn't bad at all. I mean, the Crown Royal and the uh, Bacardi mixed in would is a very different uh, combination right there. But I don't taste the apple at all or the banana. 
I taste more. Yeah, I only put little bits of everything. It just in tastes there. sweet. I, I, it's just got a sweet flavor to it. I mean, it's not bad. It's it's not something I'd go and get, but it, it didn't bother me. That didn't affect me bad. So, anyways, about this movie, uh, I'm looking forward to us. Uh, actually, Ragnar, you're for when was the first time you saw this? Sorry. Probably when it came out. You seen it in the theater or did you see it like on HBO or <clears throat> Cinemax or something like that? Uh, fuck. I may have seen it in the theater. Yeah. Maybe. I honestly don't remember. Did you enjoy it when you saw it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed the hell out of it. <clears throat> in my opinion, it's a great sword and sandal epic. And we'll be talking about it a little bit because I'm doing the same thing I've done with a lot of my episodes where I just pick scenes. And we talk about it going throughout the movie. So the first scene, of course, is uh, Achilles killing Bogaris. Uh, the scene with Brad Pitt, Achilles, as Achilles. Who actually, Russell Crowe was the first choice to play Achilles. What did you all think of that? What Do you works? think Russell Crowe would have made a good Achilles? Fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Pretty good. I think it's the reason why they did that. It would have be- been a completely different fucking film. It would have been, yes. but I think Achilles was supposed to look more like a like a, you know... A good-looking god, basically, type of person. Like he wasn't supposed to be like a big, bulky guy. I think he was more of like a athletic build. I don't know. Would this you time frame? He Russell Crowe wasn't a big guy. Well, it was uh, Gladiator came out in two thousand, <clears throat> right? Because we just did that episode, so it was about four years later. I mean, it would have worked, but it would have been yeah, pretty different. I mean, unless they made his hair longer or something like that. Because was Achilles known to have blonde hair? I don't know if that was in the Iliad or, or anything like that. I don't think they really describe. From what they I remember, don't. I really don't think they described. They don't describe what he looks like. His, not his, his hair. Detail. Oh, not, okay. his, not his hair. But I mean, I, I would. I, would, I can imagine it being blonde. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> thing you got to remember about the Odyssey and the Iliad, mm-hmm. it's poetic. Yes. So. Which at the end of the uh, near the end of the show, before we do our pint reviews, we will have a comparison between the two, where I have some different things that are different from the movie and the original poem. But this is actually the one thing about uh, that actually tells the story about Achilles right here when his mother's te- speaking to him. If you stay in Larissa, you will find peace. You'll find a wonderful woman. You'll have sons and daughters, and they will have children. And they will love you. And when you're gone, they will remember you. But when your children are dead, and their children after them, your name will be lost. If you go to Troy, glory will be yours. Glory. They will write stories about your victories for thousands of years. The world will remember your name. But if you go to Troy, you will never come home. For your glory walks hand in hand with your doom. And I shall never see you again. You know this to be true, Mother. Nervous. See, the thing about Achilles is that he has a choice of being a, you know, finding a wife and, you know, living his life, having kids and not being remembered. And then he has a choice of going into battle and dying and being remembered, basically put as a legend no matter what. Do you think that's a hard choice for him to make? No. Because he goes for because the choice he does take. Is- no, it's not a hard decision at all for him. Because he he literally just wants fame and glory. Yeah, he wants his name to be remembered forever. He could give two shits about a wife and kids and family. You know, it makes me laugh at their self awareness of like their preservation of history. Yeah, yeah. Because how do the fact that they keep saying the you know history will remember us? It always makes me laugh. I'm like, that's yeah. self aware of that. <laughs> I would like never they knew, hey, we're gonna make a, they're gonna make movies about us. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny. That, that works perfectly. But uh, do you guys don't believe? Do you believe? You already said, Goot yourself, that you weren't a fan of Brad Pitt being casted as Achilles. I never said that. I was. 
I said this mess when I saw the theatrical cut. Okay. But it's just they, the my biggest issue was like they took away a lot from the mythology and the magic side of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when his mother dipped him, did she miss the Achilles on purpose? That they skipped that whole myth. Yeah. Well, I know that I actually have that in the uh, things yeah, of the she held him upside down. Yeah. Yeah, well, to the point where she's holding onto his Achilles where it doesn't get dipped into the uh what's it called? Is that that's in the Iliad. I I didn't and actually the river sticks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she was dipping him into the river sticks. Yeah. So But I guess but, my I guess my question to that is is what did she not want to put her hand in there? So is that why his Achilles did not get I think it's just something to add to the story, in my opinion. That's really in order to make the poem interesting about his Achilles being his weak part of his body. So it's just something to add. It's a plot device when you think about it. I mean, what do you guys think? What are you laughing at? It's a damn MacGuffin. But, yeah, it's it's (laughs) sad but true. But it just goes with the mythology behind him. So they kind of touch upon (laughs) it, but then they, they go away from it. So it's like, come on. Yeah. Now, the whole thing I asked Goot about the cast, uh, Adam and Ragnar, what did you think of uh, Achilles being casted as, uh, or Brad Pitt being casted as Achilles? You think they, yeah, I know. I, Achilles being casted as Achilles? Yeah. <laughs> Brad Pitt being I cast as Achilles. I thought his tendon did amazing. <laughs> yes, it did. Until it blew up. Uh, I thought he did fine, honestly, as, as the character. Um, I know some people brought up... Um, about him being like a very wooden actor in yeah. this movie or wooden character. But I don't see that at all considering the fact that the character he's playing mm-hmm. is emotionless. That's true. So like he has he has one thing on his mind <clears throat> and I mean, fine, sorry, two things. Fame and glory. Right. You know, and he tells his Myrmidon the same thing. Yeah. You know, and if that's wooden, if the, if Brad Pitt is playing a wooden character, then he did it perfectly. Okay. You know, I can agree with you on that. You know, yeah, but, I, but it, as far as like wooden acting in this or like, yeah, what do you, else? I don't. I don't see it exactly. What do you expect him to do different? Like that's how that's how they were back in the day. Yeah, yeah. The only thing that was to make a, you know point out was his accent changing throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. Right. That was the only thing could say negative about this his action, his part. In my, in, the movie. in my opinion, I think he was well casted as Achilles, but I do think that another member was casted even better. In my opinion, and Orlando like, Bloom. No, but he did play a good bitch. He I'm did. not gonna lie. He did, he did, he did play did. a good bitch, but Adam, do you believe Achille- uh, Brad Pitt was a good Achilles? Yes, I, I think he did a good job. He, I think he took his, the way he portrayed him probably directly from the director. I think yeah. the director told him to portray portray him cold, portray him like you're saying wooden, because yeah. um, he didn't have any cares other than fame and glory. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, you you could tell that that's all he cared about when. Everybody else went to battle, and he was like, nope, we're going to wait up here until they call us because right. we want them to know that they they can't win without us. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's all he was there for. Um, well, plus, plus, like, there's there, – you have one reference point for this person, you know? Right. And that's kind of a fucking hard thing to read through. Right. You know, and so you're you're really having to fucking dissect and read a lot in between the fucking lines yep. of of how this person was, mm-hmm. you know, in reality back then, according to one person. Right. So, uh, you know, like like you said, Adam, he's probably taking his direction from the fucking director, yeah, right, right, on it, and going you know, with it, yeah. Well, I think Eric Bana, casted as uh, Hector, did an amazing job in this. I actually liked his character more than Achilles, in my opinion. He should have thrown that bitch overboard. <laughs> yeah. None of this shit would have fucking happened. Oh, right. oh, yeah, that's true. On the ship, when they were heading back to Troy, which was uh, kind of shocking. And the thing is, but he really, really stood up for his brother. He, like, he was really there for his brother. And he should have which, tossed his brother right after. 
He should have. Yeah. yeah. No, trust me. But there was also other issues that I had, especially with Priam. Priam and uh, his fucking religious dudes that were constantly telling him what to do, and he would listen to them. He wouldn't mm. listen to his gotta, son. He would listen the only time to them. Frame, the yeah. time frame of... I know, I know, but... They believed so fucking much in the gods that... Um, I mean, and plus also, like, that was the time frame. Yeah. You know, in, in any um, civilization back then... Yeah. Is that you, all, that you had your gods that you believed in, and they ruled everything that you fucking do so everything had a fucking purpose from yeah. them right you know like the fucking priestess i saw a hawk carrying a snake and now that means we're gonna win a great fucking battle yeah well that that was a lot Dude, of things y'all got fucking lucky yeah all right it's all luck. it's all game <laughs> jesus of luck. christ but what did you all think of uh eric Bana as hector all together do you think he did a good job at his role yeah he killed it he was like the yeah a good, no, i think he did yeah he was a good big brother. I mean, he he cared about family and like his tradition. So I mean, yeah. he killed it. And then we also have Brian Cox as Agamemnon, <laughs> which I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I think he just had fun with this fucking role. Watching him in the beginning, I don't want to. I don't want to see a battle. You know, it's just the way that he talks out in the battlefield, and you know the way that he talks to Tro- uh, talks to Achilles. Which I have that whole argument when uh, after the whole uh, battle of um, the uh, the uh, the raid on the beach of the uh, uh, beaches of Troy. But I think Brian Cox was just fun with the role, which is funny because there's a lot of roles that he's done. done well, he did. Uh, he was great in X-Men 2 um, as, uh, what's his name in X-Men 2? What would you, Goot, you know the guy? Uh, the Striker. Yeah, Striker. Yeah, Striker. Yeah, thank you. And also, uh, he, wasn't he the original Hannibal, I believe, in Manhunter? Yes. Yes. But he did a lot of good roles, but I think he really had fun with this role. I enjoyed Brian Cox in this as kind of the villainous role, but that's another question I have to ask. Do you think there's any villains in this movie? Do you think there is a good side and a bad side? The Greeks or the Tro- or, or the Trojans? Who is the good side? Who's the good side? They both are, and they're both the bad side. Exactly. That's, that's exactly what I wanted to talk about because I was really curious on what people would think. Like, who's the villain here? But Bri- Priam, he's a good king, but he's not a smart king. Brian Cox, uh, Agamemnon, do you feel like he was a smart king, or do you think he was just he just wanted to take over Troy? I mean, he he wanted everybody to be at his you know his foot whenever battle he, comes upon. You know, he wanted to rule the Aegean. Yeah, he wanted he wanted to control the entire Aegean area, and that was his grow, that was his goal. Grow and conquer. I mean, he was yep. he was very smart. He knew how to move pawns and like how to just coordinate himself in the best position possible. So yeah, but here's a scene right here. Here's a clip right here of. Uh, the scene between Achilles and Agamemnon, which I think is great because it shows how Agamemnon does not like Achilles. Like, he can't stand him, but he knows that he needs him to win this battle. Apparently you won some great victory. Ah, perhaps you didn't notice. The Trojan beach belonged to Priam in the morning. It belongs to Agamemnon in the afternoon. I can have the beach. I didn't come here for sand. No. You came here because you want your name to last through the ages. A great victory was won today. But that victory is not yours. Kings did not kneel to Achilles. Kings did not pay homage to Achilles. Perhaps the kings were too far behind to see. The soldiers won the battle. History remembers kings, not soldiers. True. Yeah. Tomorrow, we'll batter down the gates of Troy. I'll build monuments to victory on every island of Greece. I'll carve Agamemnon in the stone. My name will last through the ages. And your you name it. is written in sand for the waves to wash away. Be careful, King of Kings. First, you need the victory. Your men sacked the Temple of Apollo, yes? You want gold? Take it. It's my gift to honor your courage. Take what you wish. I already have. Afarius! Hemon! The spoils of war. No. No argument with you, brothers. Priscilla was actually a slave girl in the poem. Again. Not what she was. She wasn't a priestess in the original. Stop! Too many people have died today. 
killing's your only talent. That's your curse. I don't want anyone dying for me. Mighty Achilles, silenced by a slave girl. Yeah, so that whole scene between them was interesting because the whole movie was a lot of hatred towards Achilles, but his uh, like second and third in command and stuff like that were telling him how we need Achilles to win this war. But then Achilles was kind of turned down because of this priestess, which was actually a slave girl in the poem. She actually really wasn't a big character. And they kind of made a whole love story between Achilles and her. Did you think that was needed? Do you think that added to the story? Do you think that was it should have stayed to the poem? It, it, it fits the storyline how they treated women back then the day. Like yeah. with her um, struggle of like, you know, like how many people are going to kill. Because that was her big thing. Like, you know, she wanted no one to die. Yeah. When I mean, she started to ask Achilles, how many people are going to die for, at your hands? He goes, a lot. And she's like, okay, as long as I do something good. But yeah. at the end, she pulls the sword out and does her thing. So it's just, it, it fits. It's a, it's a good so the, the problem is movies, there's so many different characters. Who was the main character? There really was When you think about it, I think it's almost Hector and Achilles. But Hector's killed off in like three quarters of the movie. That's what the director wanted, but I'm not sure. There's so many different storylines, so many different characters, all the dialogue. It was like, it was uh, whatever they had the dialogue in most scenes at that, at that moment. It's yeah. got a lot going on, mm -hmm. like yeah. storyline-wise. Yeah. But luckily, it's not really hard to follow. Mm-hmm. You know, I think if they follow the timeline of it, of actually what happened, then it would have been a little bit more difficult to fucking follow. Yeah. And it probably would have been Troy part one, Troy part two. Could you see this being better as an extended storyline, basically in a miniseries than a movie? Well, this Fuck has yeah. been a miniseries. Where? Yeah. Oh, on Netflix? Is there another one of the Netflix? This was a sci-fi. It was on the Sci-Fi Channel a long time ago. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Was it like, uh, like almost like a, a season episode, or just like a mini series? A mini series. See, I did my yeah. They did the same thing for the, um, a, you know, Odysseus and the uh, mm -hmm. Odyssey. Who, it was fantastic. Yeah. Who was the main in the poem? Yes, but in yeah. the movie. He is basically just a brush side character. Achilles? Yeah. No, Odysseus. no. No, Odysseus. 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 Well, Odysseus really wasn't that big of a role. That's Sean Ben's character. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean Bean. Sean Bean's Bean. character. I always thought it was Sean <laughs> Ben. Uh, Sean Bean's character, but I felt like he was actually very minimal in this movie. He was kind of more of like Achilles' friend, but also was trying to go for the, basically help the Greeks. He said he wanted the Greeks to win. He didn't care about the King Brian Cox. He cared about the Greeks winning the war. He has no fucking choice. Yeah, because he's he's, he's he's a he's a fucking servant. Yeah, mm -hmm. to um, Agamemnon because he lost him probably in a battle with Agamemnon, and he says, "Whenever I whenever I heed my call, you guys will be there for a battle and stuff like that." Just like yeah. the whole opening scene of the movie where you see that whole battle where that king loses, uh, which that's actually a character that's, that's too fucking long. Yeah, what the opening scene. You thought the opening scene was too it's long? Too fucking long, man. Eh, it didn't bother me all that much. Look, of course, it is. you're the one that picked this fucking. Oh, the cut. director's cut where you see the dog running through the uh, yeah. the issue. I didn't have any the, issue the, with the it. The theatrical cut is fucking straightforward, simple, easy. Adds to it though. I what, mean, what do you what do you what guys adds think? To it, do you guys think that that was a good opening sequence? Or you think it was too long? It dragged. It was. It was not even okay. paced. It was just too long. Didn't add too yeah. much. How about you, Adam? Yeah, it, I dragged. Yeah, I mean, wow. Okay, why? I have the dog walk up to. I, I'm guessing that may have been his previous owner. I don't know what it was. Nice he walked up to and licked, and then tried to protect him from everybody else. I was yeah. like, what the? You know why? <laughs> why is that in there? I mean, I, yeah, I, it's I, just. I understand why. Why that scene was there. Because, like, the the next part when. Um, Agamemnon's talking to the other king. Right. You know, it explains why that dead guy is there. That's true. You know, from yesterday, from the previous battle. Yeah. 
But I think I, you know, just like we all said, I thought I think it was just too fucking long. Yeah, but they could they could have done the exact same thing with a large overhead shot of a battlefield zoomed out, and then they zoom in as they start approaching each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They do the same thing versus having a dog walking through the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So, so you guys all agree <laughs> that you guys don't care for the whole dog scene and that whole opening sequence. I had no problem with it. It didn't bother me. Um, but how about the storming of uh, the beaches of Troy? Do you think that was a good battle scene, especially when, you know, Achilles and the Murdens? What? How do you say it? What? Uh, the the Achilles what? men. Say it? No, I don't know what it is. I don't, I'm you, not you, saying it. I'm not trying you to. You fucking do know what it is. I know what it is. <laughs> this not, is your show. I'm not saying it again. So somebody help me here. I, I, I know you're trying to get me a punishment shot here. So so help me out. You have your notes. I don't have the 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 name of the uh, of what they are. I don't. So what what is it, guys? I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna the Merid- Meridians. That's two. <laughs> <laughs> That's two again. Come on, Goon, help me out. Huh? Help me out. What, what what is the name of the uh, of Achilles' crew? I didn't catch it. What were you trying to say? <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> what were you trying to do? You're trying to <laughs> look it up. Uh, I, I already know. It's just I I don't know how to pronounce it right. Then sound it out. <laughs> you guys. Uh, no, we don't. All right. Let me see here. We got uh, Achilles and Mer. Let's see. What? Uh, all Mermaids? right, here we go. Meridians. Spin. That's then. How do you say it? Myrmidons. Not meridians. There's, there's, a second, there's a second M there. M E R I Merme. Mer. Yeah, that's Mid? not what you have said. Myrmidons. That's what it is. It's myrmidons. Yes. Yes. Okay. Then why? Where's the extra M? Myrmidons. After the meridians. Go by what they say in the movie. <sighs> I'm going by the spelling, and that's what I'm going by. Okay, okay you're still the movie? wrong. But there's no extra M in there. You're still wrong. But where's the extra M? Myrmidons. After, after the R. Who fucking wrote that? Myrmidons. In Chinese medicine, the bladder and kidney myrmidons oh, run along the Achilles tendon on the heel. Thank you. M E R I. D I A N S. That's spelled wrong. It's M Y R M I D O N S. <laughs> no, yeah, no, dude. no. Yes, yes, uh huh. Look at what you're typing, though. You're looking up fucking medical facts. All right, let me see here. Mer- be two shots, dude. You spelled it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's still still saying the same way. What did you type in? Oh, all right. Show me. Uh, put put I'll it on, share your, my on screen. your screen. From the movie, not from the poem. From the movie, movie? because on the movie, that's the way it's spelled. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, it's M Y R M I O D I O D. All right, is that from the movie or is that from the poem? The movie. I said the uh, beat. The beat scene. What's that say? Right here, IMDb. Myrmidons. You're welcome. See, the thing, I, I did the AI like you told me, and that's what it said for me. Oh, blame it. I- <laughs> where, where's it say I, AI? No, when I did the chat group. The, 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 okay. The chat group right there. Okay, but where on here? No, when I looked it up <laughs> earlier. Not, it's not in my but notes. How is that my fault? <laughs> you told me to use AI, and I did. All right, so I told you to use AI for the for the fucking names of people. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I thought, well, ah, what did it land on? Malort shot. Oh, okay. All right, give me a fucking. Well, that's one. <laughs> no, I'm only doing it once. Why? Because I'm only doing it once. Why? I, was... <sighs> Why? Dude, it's you right, said it like it's right next to Chucky times, over man. there, I believe, on the other side of Chucky. <laughs> is it over there? Oh, uh, yeah. Fuck. 
All right. Anyways, what did you all think of the scene of the uh, attack of uh, the beaches? What did you do? You think that was a great, well produced? I mean, like a well good battle scene. It was. It uh, it showed not necessarily the um, not really the ineffectiveness of the Trojans. But the determination and um, the, uh, the, the courage, lust, the lust, the lust for uh, for glory, glory. Yeah. yeah, with um, Achilles and his crew, yeah, you know, and it showed the effectiveness of that fucking particular crew up until like until um, the rest of the fucking fleet got there, yeah. Well, the fact that says he must be out of his mind, basically, because he wants like, to die. Yeah, he, he doesn't care. He just wants the fame and glory, mm-hmm. which I guess, like I said, that is a thing of old times where they want fame and glory. They don't care about anything else. They just want to be remembered. It depends on the person. Yeah. And it's yeah. the same today. Now, you know, Ajax played by Tyler Maine and that whole battle mm-hmm. scene between fucking Hector. Stupid line. <laughs> Line. His fucking line. What was his line? <laughs> huh? What line My name is Ajax, and I am the crusher of skull, and I break bones, and blah blah blah. Oh, you didn't care for that? It was fucking stupid. I didn't and mind it. It was stupid that. and useless. Did not need to be in the fucking scene. Uh, okay, well, I think it's bad acting, but it, it wasn't a bad. It's both. Do you think if it was said differently, it would have been better? Or do you nope. think it didn't need to be in there at all? It, it, that that whole line there had no fucking purpose whatsoever. The original shot of him. Getting shot in the fucking leg and ripping the arrow off? Yeah. That was perfectly fine. Him getting shot in the fucking leg and then ripping the fucking arrow in half and then leaving the rest of his arrow, the arrow hanging in his fucking leg. Yeah. Um, and then him standing there. I'm gay. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you Look at my that. fucking Warhammer. Blah, 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 blah. All right, Goop. Adam, what do you think? <laughs> his actions are more effective than his speech. Cheers, by the he way. Didn't need to make, he didn't need to make that speech. Him fighting the way, as hard as he's fighting, tearing the arrow out and keeping on going, that was more effective on how strong he was versus having to make a speech saying how strong he was. So you, yeah. think, it, you think it wasn't needed at all? You think no. that was just dialogue that didn't need to be in the movie? Yeah. 100%. All right. You too, but Goop? From a picture standpoint, it was beautifully shot. The yeah. everything-wise, perfect picture, you know, just perfect. But yeah. they they screwed it up. Well, also the whole fight between Paris and Malawis, which Ooh. I think uh, Malawis. That's how I even went online and did a no. audio thing. It's Malawis. No, it's not. And that's three. What is it Ooh. that? Menelaus. <laughs> Menelaus. Malawis. It's M-E. I even went online and looked at it. Malawis. It's M E N E L A U S. Menelaus. Oh my God, I I did I did the research. How do you? <laughs> All right. What, what's the what's the uh, Agam- Agamemnon Borgris? Da, 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 da. Yeah, look it up and say how do you say Menelaus. it? All right, but how do you say it? Menelaus. Okay, but how even do you in say the it? movie? No, it was in the movie. It I'll... said Menelaus. All right, how do you spell that? I M- heard him say Menelaus. Me too. Or okay, or Menelaus. I heard. Yeah, I, that's what okay, I was hearing. Menelaus. Not what he said. All right, I'm going. Oh, how do you spell it? This M E N E. L A U S. All right, here we go. I'm not going to get anything for this, but here we go. Menelaus. Okay, or Menelaus. So we're all then we're all wrong. N- n- no. Didn't the AI just say Menelaus? Menelaus. That's yeah. what I've been saying the entire time. That's what Adam was but saying. But you didn't say that, so you were wrong too. He waited for Menelaus. Yeah. Which is what they said. Menelaus. Which is what they say in the movie. <sighs> Menelaus. Yes. You still said it wrong three times. You also said it wrong, too. Not three fucking times. Okay. This fucking three-time rule is driving me nuts. <laughs> you fucking agreed to it. I didn't agree to shit. Yes, you did. What is that? Oh, daddy picks. Oh, well, I'm the dad. Oh, nope. we had the respin. <laughs> we got that lucky. Bomb, 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 bomb. All right. Who got punished? 
Uh, technically me because I'm saying everything wrong. Oh, he is. And it's funny because he's blaming me for this. Huh? Because I made a suggestion to him to use AI, all right? <laughs> and I did. For the, fu- for the fucking cast and crew okay. of the movie so it's easier on him. So he's not having to fucking type it out and mistype everything. Okay. So that's what he did. He's still fucking it up. <laughs> why Why did you call me to verify the liquor wine thing? Uh-oh. Because I knew what you told me. Yeah. And then what he told me. And I said the exact same thing where I said. No, you did not. To, I said, <laughs> you, I picked a, I said, you can pick a liquor. No, you said pick it. I liquor. said pick a liquor. But then right afterwards, I said, you know what? You go ahead and pick it. You're buying it. I said that in the text right afterwards. No, you said you don't want wine. Liquor, liquor, not wine. But then I wine. said, it's up to you. You can pick it right not afterwards. Liquor. Not wine or liquor, because you said you don't want wine. But then I said, it's up to you. You pick it. You're buying it. You go ahead and pick whatever you want. That's what I said after the text. I went ahead and changed my mind right when you said it's that. I was like, you know. My mind. But I said that you can go ahead and pick whatever you want. So I changed. Yeah, of liquor. No. I said, whatever you want to pick right afterwards. Of liquor. Okay, then, yeah, I but, then, you, then I didn't say the right word, but I said pick it. Why are we still going on after this? She brought it up. All right, guys, you ready? <laughs> Three times. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, goo, what the fuck? The All right, here. Yeah, he's very butt hurt right I now. Party foul. What is it? Ah, spelt in my hand. <laughs> Two shots from a lord. There we there go. We All right. <sighs> now, thanks, Goop. Now, stop blaming AI <laughs> for for your notes. All right. So, anyways, the uh, fight with Ajax and um, you didn't like Ajax's line, but did you think the fight with him and Hector was fun? Do you think that was a good, uh, well, uh, well made fight? Achilles and Hector? Yeah. No, Achilles uh, for Hector and Ajax. I thought it was fine. I think Hector got his butt whooped. He did, but then he prevailed. Yeah, it all I mean, it just really it just takes one fucking good move. Yeah. You know? You gotta figure. Ajax is fucking for that time frame. Yeah. You know. I mean, he was a big dude. Yeah. I don't think I don't know if Hector may have ever like fought somebody that size. You know, but also, like, you're on an uneven playing field. Right. You know, in sand. You know, like, uphill and downhill. Yeah. So well, that that, that, com- that storyline was completely different from yeah, the, poem. the poem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because in the poem, Aja- Ajax didn't Hector, – Hector didn't kill Ajax. Ajax survived the war and then committed suicide. Yeah, believe it or not, that's actually in my notes on the end for yeah. the uh, for the uh, differences in the poem. There, there's a right. lot of differences between the poem and this movie. I mean, the thing is, they made this movie more of a Hollywood-like, especially with not involving any of the gods, basically, in this movie. Um, but in my opinion, I think it was still... I think it was done well. I think they still did a good job trying to change the story around. I mean, the, the guy who uh, wrote this is actually the same guy who did Game of Thrones. So you can tell there's a lot of... There's a lot of characters in this movie, just like Game of Thrones had so many characters. The first episode had like so many characters that you couldn't even follow up because there were so many of them. But at least with, at least with Game of Thrones, though, he had time to tell the, the right story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and here, here you don't. it's hard to tell this story in a three-hour movie. That's true. Um, well, I mean, because they they just they literally cut out years of the story. This movie takes place 17 days. The Battle of Troy right. and the War of Troy is 17 days, but it was actually 10 years. 10 years. Fall, which is completely different. So it's, it's weird how they crammed 10 years into 17 days. And all because the well, whole... They didn't battle- cram 10 years in 17 days. They just cut out 10 years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they said this war only took 17 days. Yeah. It's not much of a war. Well, that's true. <laughs> now, the, uh, the whole thing about Priam and uh, the king, King and Ag- Agamemnon, which king did you guys prefer? Did you like Priam or did you like uh, King Agamemnon? <sighs> Which you think was the better king? It's kind of debatable. I, I mean, obviously it's debatable, but <laughs> duh. Um, I'd, I'd go Priam. Really? Okay. Adam, 
I think he. I think Priam was the more honorable king. Yes, he was. Which yes. I have a clip with him and Achilles when he actually yeah. goes kiss the hands mm-hmm. of the man that killed his son. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. He has no idea who he is either. No. Yeah, I think he was. I think he was more more honorable than than this old guy in my back of my mind. Knee on his knees, kissing my hands, trying to go up. my I know he was like looking at us like, "What the fuck?" How about you? Who do you think is the uh, better king? I think Amnon was just wanted power. I mean, that's all he really wanted. He really, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he's a good king. I would say he was actually, he's not an honorable king. Especially, he's the backstabber. He backstabbed Priam, and killed him. That, that, that's not, that's not. Did he back? I, literally, yeah, he, literally, he backstabbed him. He literally backstabbed. Yeah, him. he's a backstabber. <laughs> um, <laughs> but hold on, no, not now. How is he a backstabber though? Aside from being literal. The fact that he did not face him in a, and to, to kill him, he did it right in the back. He killed him in the back. That's a bad way to go, isn't it? When you say that's dishonorable? No, because they weren't fighting each other. It was two kings going against each other. When mm-hmm. you, well, no, they, did, they didn't no. fight, but I mean, I don't know. What do so you guys you speak, think? So you, are you taking backstabber as literal or figurative? Literally. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's literally. Literally. okay. No, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, no, literally. literally the way he killed him. That if he was really wanted, he should have faced him and killed him face to face instead of killing him in the back. Well, I mean, you got to figure Agamemnon is cowardly. He is. You know. Well, I wouldn't say cowardly because he wanted to keep fighting when they were saying you're you're too close and the arrows are coming down on him. And he still wanted to keep going. Mm-hmm. And so? Odysseus was being the smart one says, you need to back off. You're, you're going to lose all your men, basically. Yeah, so that's being stupid. That, yeah, that's just that's just a bad general. Yeah, that's all that yeah. is. That's being stupid. Yeah. He's trying very to retreat. And, and why I say cowardly is he's cowardly, but yet smart. Right. At the same time. Um, because you you kind of see when him and Achilles are, are in his tent talking. Yeah. And um, when Achilles is telling him that... Um, that the other generals were too far behind. Mm-hmm. You know, all the other kings were too far behind to see what he did. Well, even Achilles was standing up on the mound saying, you guys, are, you'll fall back. What are you guys doing? You guys are being stupid mm-hmm. by, you know, getting close so they can be right in the range of their arrows and everything. Yeah. So that, that whole battle scene with the attack of Troy, though, did you guys think that was a good... Did, in the director's cut, you could tell that it was a lot more brutal and violent. Did you guys think that was good, or did you prefer the theatrical cut where it's a lot shorter and not as uh, violent? See, this is the one thing I have a question because the everybody says that the director's cut is not as good. I still think it is. It's more violent. I feel I feel like you need to see that violence, that brutality of war around those times. Do you feel like it was too much? Or do you feel like it was better than the theatrical cut? I honestly don't remember the theatrical cut. The how wasn't that as violent. was so wasn't that, as violent. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have a problem Fucking with, with how being this was. Bashed around, and you see people getting bashed in the face and all that in the yeah, director cut. You didn't see that in the theatrical cut. Well, it, you, you contradict yourself. Like, you try to lump the entire section of that into that one scene. I think the scene was perfectly shot. I think that was one of the scenes that actually works in this movie. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, the brutality and violence, and just you can see the true aspects of a war or a battle. Right. So that gave it the more real effect. Like, well, you actually cared what was going on at the at that moment, that battle. So, I, in this scenario, it does work. Okay. So the director's cut, you prefer better for the battle scenes. In this version, yes. Yeah. Okay. Cut. Yeah. That that was that's what I and you don't think it makes it any better. Mm. No, it's not that I don't think it makes it any better. I don't think it adds to anything or takes away from anything. Okay. Um, like. But if you're as if you're asking about one one specific scene, yeah, in the whole movie, um, as opposed to like the whole the whole of it with yeah. the director's cut, you know, um, like the opening the beach battle, the opening beach battle, um, I think it was perfectly. I think it was fine in the theatrical version. And I think it was perfectly fine in, in the, the director's, director's cut. cut. Okay. You know, so, uh, you know, just like Goot said and you said, you know, it it shows a lot more gore and a lot more blood 
Man, I was, uh, it's not even fucking gore that it fucking shows, really. Slightly. I mean, you don't see, like, decapitations and stuff like that. You see heads getting bashed in. You see... Yeah. You see, no, you see, like, you really, little, you really don't, though. Slight, I, I saw more brutal than the theatrical cut. I don't it, remember. It may be more brutal, yeah. but, like, you're not seeing... Um, and you did see a decapitation. I know I saw at least one decapitation. Oh, there was? Yes. Yeah, no, when... Was. Yeah, when he was... When... Francis was being taken at that final battle. Oh yeah, you're, and, right, you're right. And he came in and cut the head off of one of the guards oh, that was that holding onto it. That was, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah that it, was it went movie. fine. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, but in my opinion, I, th- I think it was great. And also the night invasion with those. What did you guys think of those fucking big balls uh, that they lit on fire to go down the beach? You think that was pretty? Uh, that was a really great special effect in how they did that. I mean, a smart way of just having these. No, that was real. I, I just thought. <laughs> fucking <laughs> Boom! Yeah, I, I it was great. I think it was act? a great night battle. Here you go. <laughs> act. Yeah. It was perfect oh. for the movie. It was a good scene. It set the setting. It would give the the, the reality that this is real. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, here's a good question to ask you guys. What is your favorite battle scene in this movie? When you had to pick, you got the the uh, the evasion of the beaches. You got the battle of Troy, and then you got the night battle right when Patroclus comes out and gets killed. Basically, apparently in the poem. He was actually not his cousin. He was actually supposed to be Achilles' lover. But then also there's other things saying that he was just Achilles' friend. So I don't know. It really goes back because I've, we saw, we've talked about how Greeks have a lot of homosexuality in the past and stuff like that. So I don't know what the poem doesn't really tell what it is. I think it's more of his closer friend. But there's other movies that portray him as being his lover. So what do you think of that all together right there? Wasn't bad for a fifteen year old to put his armor on. Dude was fucking legit. Yeah. yeah. Just, I, that was that was the fucking problem the mistake he made. But it was more funny that people didn't realize it wasn't him. He, yeah. got, he died for on purpose, so <laughs> crazy. But what was your favorite battle scene? Does does Hector fight an Achilles count? Yeah, you could say that. That's my favorite, dude. Okay. 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 Yeah, that, that was which that was we mine. are about to get to actually right now to a <laughs> clip. So yours is the Hector and Achilles, the Hector and Achilles uh, battle between each other. Adam, my Hector and Achilles. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I like I, that scene, but I I think the battle of uh, Troy was actually amazing, especially when Hector was going against Ajax. I I thought that was a very intense battle scene right there. And also the night battle with Patroclus, I, I thought that was a great scene, but it was really weird in how as soon as Patroclus died, you're like, all right, let's 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 go home and take a break. We're done. You, you know, it, it's it, it's it, we're done battling right now. Do you think that's what it would have been like back then? No. Exactly. No. I think that was more of, you well, know. It depends. If they weren't yeah, Spartans. Not or, I, I would say 50-50. Yeah. yeah you gotta, You got to remember, too. I mean, I'm not is a historian, that, so I don't, I don't know how that would actually be. Well, here's the thing you got to remember, too. The, the film is shot for, what, 17 fucking days? You know, that's all you really see. Yeah. This happens over fucking 10 goddamn years. Who knows what year that particular fight happened? That's true. You know, who knows how long they were fighting up until that particular fucking point? Yeah. How exhausted they are of fucking fighting each other mm-hmm. over one tyrant's goal to control a fucking kingdom right you know and expand his territory yeah so it could be it could have been a month it could have been five years eight years you know you don't we don't know Mm -hmm. and very well may have been um they fucking stopped fighting and went home yeah you know, because that does happen. Yeah. That does happen in modern war. Yeah. You know, so like it happened in. Uh, it was either World War One or World War Two. One of the two. Can't Where basically they just took a break from war. Like basically took a break after the battle. Yeah, no. That was so low. They were. Um, it was Christmas time. And no, it was uh, World War Two. It was Christmas time. And you have. Um, on one side you have German forces, on the other side you have American forces. Right. And in the middle you have no-go zone. Mm-hmm. All right? 
Now, um, during this time, uh, what was it? They were, nobody was shooting at each other. They were just in their fucking, in their bunkers. Right. And I can't remember if uh, whichever side threw it, but it went to the enemy side. And um, it was like a baseball or something. I can't remember exactly. Right. But um, they threw it back. Yeah. And so then for that little bit of fucking time, there was no fighting. There was no killing. There was nothing. Yeah. They all stood in the fucking middle right. of this war zone. And they friggin' had a drink. Mm-hmm. And they threw, um, I think I think it was fucking baseball. You know what? I, I think I've heard about that because I think they did the same thing in uh, World War One, and I remember it was even put in the movie, uh, The War Horse, yeah. where the two uh, were basically like playing a game or doing something while they were waiting before they're about to do a battle, mm-hmm. but it was two opposite enemy yeah. and and everything else. So I can understand what you're saying about that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into the clip, which is really quick. Uh, this is uh, actually, what did you all think about the whole scene? Because apparently in the poem, it's a whole lot different where uh, he's yelling out Hector. Hector! It's different. In the poem, he did it for like five or six days. Is that true, Adam? That, I believe so. Hector! Yeah, I think, it was, I think it was five days. Yeah. Before uh, Achilles and Hector uh, fight to the point where they actually have this great lines right here between before they're about to fight I've seen this moment in my dreams I'll make a pact with you with I felt for Hector witnesses. in this role I'm sorry I, I thought Hector was the, the better winner man will allow the loser all the proper funeral rituals there are no pacts between lions and men Now you know who you're fighting. I thought it was you I was fighting yesterday. And I wish it had been you. But I gave the dead boy the honor he deserved. You gave him the honor of your sword. You won't have eyes tonight. You won't have ears or a tongue. You will wander the underworld blind, deaf, and dumb, and all the dead will know. This is Hector. The fool who thought he killed Achilles. I think that was a great set of lines between both of them to the point where Hector killed Patroclus because of the whole ordeal, thinking that it was Hector. I mean, thinking it was a, he was Achilles the whole fucking time. And I felt like Achilles, it felt like, especially when they said that that boy just won this war for us, basically going out and dying because it made Achilles have this whole like revenge mode where he's like, I'm ready to fucking kill because I lost my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like that he was just you, going do, for Hector I know but do you guys feel <laughs> right there yep, wrong hole. do you all feel that Hector I mean, do you feel for Hector in that role like do you feel sorry that he died like that do you think he needed to die not like how by the sword in battle one on one combat yeah no you feel like that that was even necessary for him like the fact that he went out there, he did it. He knew that he was going to die. As soon as he knew that he killed Patroclus out in the battlefield, he was like, I'm fucking dead. No, I'm going to get killed here. Mm-mm. Why would he think that? Because he knew that he wasn't the warrior like Achilles was. He knew that he was dead as soon as Sunshine's he heard his name being yelled out. Once in a while, though. Oh, well, I know, but hey, what, did you, what did you all think of that? He, he knew he was going to die because that's why he told his wife to take the son and, hi- and run because he, he was pretty confident that he was not going to survive meeting back him. He knew Achilles was going to come for him. But he was still planning on, he was still going to do it no matter what. He was still going to fight Achilles. So he wasn't being a coward. He was still going to be out there. But the fact is, is that he knew that that was his death, that his death was to become. Yeah. He, he was, I mean, like, like Ragnar said, he could have, he could have won. Who, you know, who knows? But he, he knew going out there, it was a more than a 50, 50 chance that he was not walking back. And that's why he told his wife, if I don't make it back, you take our son and you, and you run. Because he knew that if he lost and died, that Troy was going to fall. What do you think, Goop? It's a perfect tragedy because 
it, it goes like with Achilles, his aura, the persona, and like the people, the the legend about him. Which yeah. is I'm fucking a warrior, and unbeatable. So if you have that in your mind, Achilles already won. So it's all about you know head games and like just being in your head. So it's it's so <clears throat> fucking well played out. That's why it's my favorite scene. Just the battle. I mean, it, it sucks he died, but I mean it's that's life. I mean it, that's what happened back that, back then. So yeah. It fits the movie. It was supposed nope. to happen. Now what happened after that sucked. Yes. Be like, 12 yeah. carried for drag for 12 days. Dragged off. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the like thing. That? It, it looked very. And it, it, that was just not a way to go to the fact that. But and the fact that Priam actually went underground and went, you know, through these little uh, routes that he knew to get back to him says, I would like to take my son back so he can, you know, do the game, the funeral games and. You know, put the the uh, uh, what is it? The two coins on the uh, eye mm-hmm. to for the uh, boatman and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But uh, th- there was that <clears throat> thing that you told me, Adam. Uh, that mm-hmm. thing about their little fight that they had. And here's the uh, little fact. So, uh, Brad Pitt and Eric Bana did not use stunt doubles for this epic duel. They made a gentleman's agreement to pay every accidental hit, fifty dollars for each fight, blow, or for each light blow, and a hundred dollars for each hard blow. Pitt ended up paying seven hundred and fifty dollars. Eric Bennett ended up paying none. This shows that Brad Pitt couldn't fight worth a shit. Yeah, he kept fucking up, so he paid him seven hundred and fifty dollars. So apparently, he kept hitting Hector or uh, um, Eric Bana, but Eric Bana did the right way. He was doing it; he didn't hit him at all. What's well, tough? Because oh. being like doing choreography and fighting, it's a whole different yeah. thing. Brad but Pitt the- trained for six months for that role. So he was fucking. He was Achilles. Yeah. So he, he wanted to kill the motherfucker. So it's just, that was his mindset. So you, so the really, he wanted to make it more realistic. So he actually was hitting him compared to Eric Bannon not hitting him at all. The thing is about Eric Bannon is that I, I think Eric Bannon was great in this role. I think his acting was the best, in my opinion. I liked his acting better than Brad Pitt as Achilles. Don't get me wrong. I actually enjoyed Brad Pitt as Achilles, but Eric Bannon, to me, stole the show from me. I enjoyed his character, and I actually felt really bad for him what he had to go through because he was just. He was being—he was a very honorable man. But would you say Achilles is honorable? With his people, yes. With his people, yes. But <laughs> not yeah. honorable with his king. He—he he, he has no. King. He give a flying fuck. Yeah. His, he has no king exactly. But he's expected to serve under Agamemnon. But Mm-mm. no, no, he is not. Fuck about that. Yeah. <clears throat> Agamemnon expects him to. Uh. He's not loyal. Living. Yeah. You know, that's why he has Odysseus as the buffer. Yeah. For him. Odysseus is kind of like he is basically the friend of Achilles. Like maybe like he's a, the only fucking king out of his out of that entire court that he respects. Yeah. I think Odysseus is yeah. probably the most respected king in the story. I yeah. would say. Is so. he also in the poem is, also? Oh yes. Yeah. He's the, the fuck, no. the fuck he's the drop? main. He's the main um, person. The main person in the story? Yeah, in the poem. Because in, yeah. the, in the movie, he, he only plays like a little small role, really. He's do, he doesn't have that big the, of a role. That's actually in, downfalls. In the poem, Odysseus is actually Ulysses. Correct. Yes, I believe. Yes. 100%. Yep. Yeah. Odysseus so they, is who? Ulysses. So Ulysses. They changed it, for the movie, they changed the name to Odysseus. But it's actually, it's actually he's actually Ulysses. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. All right, so we're going to go into the scene where Priam is actually talking to Achilles. Uh, This is my last long uh, clip right here, but uh, it's very interesting because it just shows how it kind of changes the mind of Achilles because Achilles was like, you know, all revenge and hatred, and after seeing this king, he even respects this king more than Agamemnon and everything else. So go into the scene right here. are you i have endured what no one on earth has endured before played by the great peter o'toole i kiss the hands of the man who killed my son priam how did you get in here i know my own country better than the greeks i think brave man 
I could have your head on a spit in the blink of an eye. You really think death frightens me now? I watched my eldest son die, watched you drag his body behind your chariot. Give him back to me. He deserves the honor of a proper burial, you know that. Give him to me. He killed my cousin. He thought it was you. How many cousins have you killed? How many sons and fathers and brothers and husbands? How many brave Achilles? It's true. Mm -hmm. I knew your father. He died before his time. But he was lucky not to live long enough to see his son fall. Taken everything from me. My eldest son, heir to my throne, defender of my kingdom. I cannot change what happened. It is the will of the gods. But give me this small mercy. I love my boy from the moment he opened his eyes till the moment you closed them. Let me wash his body. Let me say the prayers. Let me place two coins on his eyes for the boatman. The thing about the uh, Priam and Achilles scene, do you feel, I don't, that's not in the poem, is it? No. no. Okay, so do you think that was a good scene to have in there to show Priam going over to Achilles to talk to him? Do you think that was, you know, to basically grab it to say, can I please have my son's body back? Do you think that was needed? For the character development, yeah. Just to show he's a good person. Because I, the Priam, I, in my opinion, even though he's an idiot, well, not an idiot, He's not smart when he just kind of goes by his religious dudes, like the, the religious guys that constantly, which, by the way, Ragnar you know, that's that's earlier, that's, that was part of the culture. That was their yeah. aspect of life. Yeah. You may not you may not think it's smart today. Yeah. But back then, you know, like I said earlier, that these fucking people back then, that's all they fucking believed in was, was religion. Was, it wasn't even fucking religion. It was they believed in the fucking gods. Yeah. And the gods controlled and protected them. You know, their fates are already fucking determined. Yeah. All right. Now, depending on what happens in between, you know, will determine, like, when your time is up. Yeah. Um, But... Priam, he had his he had his fucking religious people, and they believed in Apollo a thousand fucking percent, mm -hmm. and that's what he went off of yeah. because that's what he believed in. Right. Now Hector, he may have believed in the gods, <clears throat> but he also believed more so on his ability and the ability of his own men yeah. to control what happens on the battlefield, not the will of the gods. Right. You know? Which, by the way... So, Priam, he's not stupid for for having his belief in the gods, for 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 protecting his city. It, it just gets to me about listening, because his sons were telling him that you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this, and he's listening to the, you know, the religion, but I understand it was of its time and everything. It's just... It just felt kind of weird. It just felt like his sons didn't matter, but the religion, think, religion does. I think Priam represented more of what the kings of that time were. Yeah, yeah. I think most of the kings were just as Priam was. Mm -hmm. Agamemnon yeah. was more of a general than a yeah. king. Okay. Um, he was looking for power. He was looking to rule. I think he was, but he he was once he even got back to back to Greece. Yeah. 
he was still believing in gods and things like that, just like Priam was. Yeah. Um, but he was more of a general looking for power and to, and to rule. Priam was more of probably what most of the kings in that time actually were. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know that dude, one of the religious dudes, is from your movie Excalibur? Which religious dude? Uh, the one that uh, <laughs> was basically saw the, the when they saw the wooden tro- a horse. Oh, yeah. that Arthur. Fucking idiot. That's Arthur from Excalibur. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, I saw his face, and he looked familiar, and I wonder if you knew that because Excalibur is one of your favorite movies, so I didn't know if you knew that or not. Uh, not. Nigel Terry uh, is his name, the uh, actor's name. Um, but I don't know. It's just that scene to me, it, it, it felt strange, but it also showed a little bit more honor and it, it changed Achilles on his direction of where he wanted to go to the point where, you know, he felt like, you know, Priam was a better king than Agamemnon and everything else. Uh, when it comes up to the Trojan horse and the raid on Troy, the Trojan horse, which I believe is also different in the poem, it really wasn't a big factor, but it was a big factor in this movie. What did you all think of the, the Trojan horse and how it was and how they brought it in there? I think it was like a a uh, gift from the gods and bringing it in and having them unlock the gates of Troy and having the whole Greek uh, army come into Troy and raid. You think that was uh, done well? Yeah, it was stunning. It was stunning epic. It was shot yeah. beautifully and like it was just the creativity behind it and just the behind the scenes stuff. It It worked very well. Well, the director's the cut was very the different. Though, the, the director's cut was very different from the theatrical cut of that version because it was a lot more brutal. It showed a lot more rape of the women. You see all these uh, soldiers taking the babies and throwing them into the fire. That wasn't in the theatrical it was cut. Two, huh? It was two, two rape scenes, two babies. That was it. Yeah, and it wasn't even fire. Well, they, just, them, they just they just like chucked them thrown into a fire or something. No, like that. no, yeah. they they took the babies out of their mother's arms and threw them back into the building. <laughs> No, yeah. they just yeah, chucked them. Was, they, weren't, well, they weren't thrown into fucking. Well, they were being thrown. In, fire. They were being thrown to their deaths, though. I mean, you take a baby, an infant. And... No, they're not going to be dead. I, I they're guarantee dead. they're going to be dead. No, it's going to be special. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going right, to uh, we're going to have some moths <laughs> in Troy, basically. No, Troy fucking burned. <laughs> <laughs> so thrown into the fire. No, they didn't. <laughs> no, they weren't. They didn't get thrown. Into, they, 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 the buildings weren't on fire at the time. But they were going to catch on fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'll give it a 95% chance. <laughs> <laughs> but you think the brutality needed to be shown with uh, the, the raping of the women, the people just being hung? I mean, that was brutal. I mean, just seeing how everybody's just getting their fucking, just getting slaughtered, basically, in the uh, the streets of Troy and everything. What did you think of that? Do you, th- you think that, that brutality needed to be shown? I don't think it was necessary to um... emphasize it. Yeah. I mean, it's, you got to figure, like, you have an invading force right. that snuck in. Yeah. You know? And I, I, I personally, I don't really think that um, that ending there or that scene there, though not scene, but the whole, the whole of the scene right. um, was really fucking necessary. You know now, and I'm I'm not saying that like I'm against that that scene or anything. It's just I don't think it was needed to uh, explain anything that was actually fucking going on right in the fucking in the movie itself. Yeah, you know, but I think the theatrical cut for that scene there was perfectly fine. Okay, for it. All right, well. We're going to go into a couple. What do you think? I mean, I thought Beer Fest did it better, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, for, for the time period, I mean, just, you know, I, I appreciate how they shot it and like how they, what they got away with doing and like that, that whole aspect. Cause I mean, unfortunately that happens in real life. So they're trying to like overemphasize it. So I guess they get a reaction from the fan or the audience. So you feel like the the brutality show just to get a reaction, basically, just say, "Oh, wow, that's well, that's pretty fucking crazy" and stuff like that. I think they were trying to show how ruthless the Greeks actually were. I mean, I figured the Trojans would be the same exact way if they were attacking the Greeks. Probably were. Uh, Yeah, you're right. 
But I, I, I just think that just you know, if it was a, the other way around, it'd probably be just as ruthless. Yeah. But I think that's what they were trying to show is is just the ruthless and the brutality of what war was at that time. It's real life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I felt like it needed to show that because it shows the reality of war. You know, just like when you see other movies uh, about World War II and uh, you know. Uh, uh, the Civil War and stuff like that, when they show the reality, it shows a more re- realistic point of view than not showing that much brutality at all. You know what I mean? Like the D-Day invasion and Saving Private Ryan. That is reality right there. Black Hawk Down. So showing but Sometimes it, less is more. You feel like it? Yeah, sometimes it is. Okay. You guys agree? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't have a problem with, with the brutality. Um... I think we're trying to push current day morals on what they were, what and what was not morals at that time. Right. Um, and they just back then. at that time, they just they had no more. They just didn't care. OK. And war was war. And if whatever was in front of them was dying. Yeah. However brutal it was. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and talk about the score real quick. And then we're going to talk about the differences between the um, the poem and the movie. I have a whole list of differences. Then I have a couple more questions, and we'll get into our pint reviews. But the score was different because One James Turner's score. Ass. What was that? One hour movie, my ass. <laughs> well, the score is very interesting because James Horner did the score, and it only took him about six weeks to compose a score. But before, there was Gabriel Yard who did the score for this movie, and it took him over a year to compose. It was completely rejected because of test screens. So then they had James Horner do the score and kind of fix it up a little bit. So I actually have samples of both scores to see a difference in what you guys think would have been better if James Horner's was good or Gabriel Yaris. So this is the... Uh, so they the, put Gabriel Yaris in the director's cut? Uh, there is maybe a five-minute sequence with his score. But it sucked. this is his score. This is James Horner's right here. This is the original. Achilles theme, basically. Which I think is powerful. I think this is a very epic score, and I think it's great. But wait till you hear... Depends on the scene. What? Depends on the scene. Well, this is the next one. This is Gabriel Yard's score coming up right here. Hold on, it's coming up. And here's Gabriel Yard. This is what it originally was intended. Uh, for, for, yeah, but for which scene, though? The exact same scene. But what, what was, which, that, which, which scene? Yeah, that was scene a, it was. Oh, sorry. That was a scene when Patroclus um, was coming out in, in uh, Achilles' uh, uniform. This is what it would originally have been. So which one's better? It's too light. It's too kind of light and airy. That, yeah, I, think Horner, I think Horner's score was better for, yeah. for that particular scene. Yeah. This is the love scene. <laughs> which is actually made into a song by Josh Groban. Remember. So this is James Horner right here. Now, Gabriel Yards is completely different. Looks like I'm happy to be alive. Yeah funny <laughs> thanks Goop <laughs> right here sounds like a scene from Ben Hur they, they tried to hit Gladiator and they couldn't it sounds horrible so which one do you prefer James Horner's or Gabriel Yard if we have to pick it's Horner yeah There you go. That's the differences between the score that it originally was intended. 
Now, in the director's cut, they kind of screwed up on the score for a couple of things. They changed. I know you guys have an mm-hmm. issue with the beginning, but the it. scene between Hector and Achilles was actually the Planet of the Apes main title score from Danny Elfman. Fucking lazy sack of shit. Did you all notice that? I don't know if you've ever seen the Tim Burton version of Planet of the Apes. They also used some music from Starship Troopers, and they also, the scene when Patroclus and Achilles is practicing on that mound in the beginning of the movie, they replaced James Horner's score with a, I don't remember the composer's score, but he did the score for... Gabriel the, Yaris. Count Monte Cristo. <laughs> oh, that was close. Yeah, the movie, the Count of Monte Cristo. So. <laughs> Which version? I don't remember. Oh, they, oh, okay. oh. Which version of the uh, County of Monte Cristo? Yeah. Uh, the one with uh, that was released. The new uh, one or f- original? The newer one. Oh, okay. Which is actually a good movie, in my opinion. I think it's a great movie. But uh, no, I, I was just curious. So you guys think James Horner's score is still better? Do you guys think it was a good score, James Horner, altogether? In the original? The theatrical mm-hmm. cut? Mm-hmm. Did you think that the differences yeah. that they changed for the director's cut was not needed? They should have ch- stuck with James Horner? 100%. Yeah, they should stay with him. Gotcha. Yeah, I was just curious. What All did you right, think? I love James Horner's score. I own the expanded score to James Horner. And I think it's an. I think it's a beautiful score. It's actually one of my top five favorite scores of all time. I love James Horner's score to Troy. What's your number six? I don't know what my number six is. <laughs> <laughs> we said top five, so you got to have a number six in there. So I figured. <laughs> Okay, anyway. Fuck, I'll go with Legends of the Fall. I don't know. Glory. I, I mean, seriously, there's there's so many other. Hans Zimmer, the Gladiator. There, there's a lot of scores out there, man. I mean, I'm, a, I'm, oh, I'm the score you think whore. That but... better than Gladiator? <laughs> I'm going to tell you this flat out, okay? I love Gladiator. I think it's a great movie. I think Hans Zimmer's score to Gladiator is great, but I actually like uh, James Horner's score to Troy better. That's just my opinion. I'm sure you guys are all going to completely be against me on that. I'm sure you're going to go for Gladiator more, but that's just my opinion. I love James Horner. I think James Horner is a great composer. I think his score is great for this. I thought his score for Braveheart was fucking beautiful. I think it was a great score for that. Well, Gladiator well, has a great score, but if, if I enjoy copying stuff from Pyrus, and yeah, I agree with you. Oh, yeah, I know. You guys. <laughs> you, <laughs> you were none of that. <laughs> what? You were on that episode, and we talked about that. Yes, you were. And we did there. a whole thing. Yeah, but we did the whole Pirates of the Caribbean, and we did a whole, like, comparison, and we were having a whole argument about mm-hmm. that. We were. Yes, we were. And I was wrong. Yes, you fucking were. <laughs> I'm just proving to the uh, our audience why you're wrong. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Thanks for pointing it out. Yep. Thumbs up to you, dude. Appreciate it. Stop questioning my authority. <laughs> Oh, my God. All right. So the difference was between the movie. So in the, in the Iliad, the war took 10 years, as we already said. Already had nine years of the great Zeus gone by, whereas in the film Troy, it only took 17 days. In the Iliad, Patroclus was not the cousin of Achilles, only a friend. Other times, people would say a lover. Achilles was dead before the Trojan horse was even built. So he never went into Troy when the... Uh, uh, the uh, horse was brought into Troy. He was never on there. He was already dead. Uh, in the Iliad, Paris is killed. Hector's baby is killed. And Hector's wife is enslaved. However, in the film, Troy s- s- makes it that they leave safely. It's a lot of differences here. Uh, Ajax doesn't die by the hand of Hector. He kills himself due to the shame of not receiving Achilles' armor. This occurs in the poem, Metamorphosis by Ovid. Uh, Meta- Metamorphosis by Ovid. I don't know who Ovid is. Just something I found. Agamemnon was killed by his wife back in Greece immediately after the war, not Priscilla's who kills him in the film. What? I don't know how to say that name, so I'm not saying it. <laughs> oh, is that her? That's the wife of uh, uh, Agamemnon. Clytemnestra? <laughs> say that for me. Because I have no idea. That's exactly what it's written, uh, the, uh, the spelling, too. Is this AI generated too? You can look it up. I'm asking. Yeah, yes, this is AI generated. This is all AI generated. How do you say uh, that name? It's C L Y T E M N E S T R A. What would that be? Clytemestra? Sure, why not? There, there you go. Agamemnon's wife. She's apparently the one that, that killed Agamemnon. Yeah. 
Hector well, was, he was a dick, so I don't blame her. Hector was too scared of Achilles to fight him, and so he ran away and ran around the walls of Troy several times. Apparently, that was in the poem. So he actually didn't face him in battle right then and there. He ran around the the K- Troy the walls several of times. Troy are miles long. Troy's not a small city. I didn't figure it was. <laughs> Boy, that man had stamina. <laughs> Venus Achilles' mother was a sea goddess. The movie does not really make the point. In the movie, Priscilla's is a member of Priam's family, but in the poem, she was simply simply a slave girl. So, which I said earlier in uh, in the episode, um, was there anything that you would know about Adam that was different from the poem? Any, not like a a lot of uh, facts, but like like a main thing um, that they changed. Right at the end, where Paris gives that sword to that uh, the character's name was Aeneas. Yeah, Aeneas was actually a Trojan warrior for the, during the Trojan War, um, and towards the end of the war, he was actually commanded by Hector to take the survivors and save them and, and take them. He he ended up taking them to Rome. And became a Roman warrior and was actually one of the largest factors in the rise of the Roman Empire. Wow. So he actually went from, from Troy to Rome and helped with the rise of the Roman Empire. So the, in the movie where he just gives it to some kid of Troy, basically, it right. actually was actually meant to go to a warrior in the poem? Yeah. yeah. Well, the well the character he gave it to, because he said, what's your name? He says, my name is Aeneas. Yeah. That uh, that Aeneas, that is who that character is. He's actually a, Tro- a Trojan fought war. in the Trojan War. Now, of course, he didn't fight it there because it was only two weeks. Yeah. But being that it was a 10-year 10, 10 war, he actually fought in the Trojan War and then proceeded to go to Rome and help with the rise of the Roman Empire. Interesting. Interesting. And there's some other things here that uh, Iliad focuses specifically on a few weeks of the final year of the Trojan War, emphasizing the rage of Achilles, his conflict with Agamemnon, and the death of Hector. Uh, Troy covers the entire 10-year span of the Trojan War, including events before and after the time frame of the Iliad. So, like I said, they've, they extended it in the, uh, it's extended in the uh, poem, but in the movie, they can kind of condense it to a couple, uh, about a week, uh, two weeks, basically. Um, characters the Iliad includes numerous gods and goddesses actively participating in the influencing of the events of the war, which I've seen in a lot of movies in the Greek times where basically the gods were always a part of it. The gods were nowhere near a part other than saying, Oh, we serve the gods and stuff like that, but they weren't a part of this movie at all. Like, I think they were going to this movie more of a realistic view than of a, what would you say? Like a folklore folklore of the gods. I mean, what do you guys well, think? It, it, yeah. I don't know. I think it, it it was nice that it broke tradition yeah. of uh, Greek mythology with the with a lot of movies that portrayed um, not necessarily folklore, mm-hmm. you know, but like Greek beliefs of that time frame. Yeah. And it's not really folklore because they could pot, I mean, they could have a they can have a sign from Zeus. Right. You know that he's with them right now and they believe it. Yeah. You know. Um, they can believe that fucking Hades is with them. Right. You know, is on the battlefield right now. Yeah. Ares. You know, or Ares. It's the same yeah. fucking god. Two different things. They're fucking <laughs> <laughs> Well, the other thing about uh so they, killing. Oh, go ahead, Goot. Sorry. So they want to make this more of a like, like a historical period piece. Like there's, <laughs> they want to emphasize the the war part, not the fantasy. And, yes, like they they took out the mythology. They they gave a nod to it by mentioning the gods and not angering them. Right. They, they were trying to keep that you know the civilization, the how their approach and mentality was. That was like their main like their, their silver lining to it. I f- I you- feel like. Which do you prefer, though? Do you prefer that it should have been done with the gods involved, or do you think there was better, more of a historical view? The, in the theatrical version, yes. The, the there's just too much dialogue. If it feels like a like a mini series, like, like how they do Game of Thrones, it's fucking perfect. Yeah. If you sprinkle that in a little bit, just to give that lore to it, it adds more mystery to it. So it's 
it's hit or miss. They, they, it's a hard balance to find. Yeah. Actually, the Iliad would actually be a really interesting thing to be as a miniseries. Uh, we talked about that earlier, but even as a couple seasons, it would it'd just be like an extended storyline and everything. Um, now, the whole thing about Agone- uh, Paris killing Achilles by shooting him in the heel, guided by Apollo, and apparently in the movie, you know, he just hit him in the heel, which, by the way, to me is a great shot. I think that is a beautiful shot where the camera is like where Achilles is laying on the ground. It looks like one of the artwork that's in one of those like Greek vases, you know, of Achilles laying like that and stuff like that with the uh, arrow in his foot. I thought that was a really good shot. Did you all think that was a great shot and how they did that? How the camera just from uh, the top up going all the way up and just looking at him? His shot would have been off. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's the way good for Hollywood. He, 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 yeah, probably stupid. he missed. That's why he hit his heel. You weren't aiming for his heel. No, he definitely <laughs> wasn't. Well, the fact is, is that he, in the movie, they kind of made it where everybody thought he died from the, getting hit in the Achilles, but no. really he got shut up in the arrow in the chest like the two or three times. thought that he died from his shot in his ankle? I mean, that's what the whole story is and how the Achilles is was his weak spot because that he was brought, dipped no, in the gods. That, that brought him down. Yeah. Oh, so I thought, I thought in the poem, see, I, I didn't read the poem. That is actually what they say killed him because it was his weak spot. Which brought him down. Oh, okay. See, I always thought it was actually that's what what killed him. So, mm-hmm. no, no. But his his aim sucked. Oh, Paris's. Yeah, it's well, he hit him twice it, first before he no, hit his. The way Achilles. he shoots is stupid. Well, that's no, he didn't. There, no, it's not, no. The, kill, the 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 ankle shot was the first shot. Brought him down. And then then he spun around and then he shot him. Three times, three three times in, in the, the chest, chest after that. Yeah, yeah the, first shot, the first shot was the anchor shot. Yeah. Well, the funny yeah. thing, anyways, going down, they got shot in Achilles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. There, there's a lot of the a lot of people don't care for this movie. Think that this movie is not a good movie. I've seen a lot of reviews. Even Peter O'Toole himself could not stand this movie. He said that he even walked out uh, halfway through the screening of the movie because he thought Wolfgang Peterson did not execute movie the story that well at all, which I felt like Peter O'Toole is just being a diva for that. Because Peter O'Toole is a very classic actor. But I thought Peter O'Toole did good for his acting and his role. You guys have seen Lawrence of Arabia, and he was also yep. in Caligula. You've never seen Lawrence of Arabia? I said, yup. Oh, I thought you said no. I'm sorry. Have you guys seen Lawrence of Arabia? Mm-hmm. And uh, also Caligula. He was also in Caligula as the uh, the Caesar. Um, and uh, many other movies and stuff like that. But I thought Peter O'Toole did great as Priam. I thought he did a really good job, but apparently Wolfgang Peterson's very hard to work with, which I, I don't understand because I, I think he's a great director. He's done so many great movies. I mean, when you think of Perfect Storm, Never Ending Story, um, Air Force One, I mean, he's done really good action pieces. Dust Boot is probably one of the best. He's a hard director to fucking work for, though. Ah, I Every wouldn't. actor has said so. What other actors have said that? Did you say that on the Perfect Storm? I did. Oh, okay. I don't remember. Uh-huh. I didn't remember that on the Perfect Storm. But um, I don't know. I, I I think this movie is a very entertaining piece of history, even though it's based on a poem. So it's not. Would you? It's not. It's based on a poem, so it's not reality. It's not real. It's based on somebody's writings. So. Do you think that they handled this well and what they did by changing the story, making it reality driven instead of going by the goddesses and stuff like that? You guys still think that this is a good film. I'm actually really curious to hear all your pint reviews. because I think everybody's going to be different on this, but the director's cut and the theatrical cut. I also want you to pick which one is the superior cut when you do your pint reviews. Um, before we get into our pint reviews, no, but we got a fucking review director's cut. You're reviewing the director's cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm asking no, you I know, which yeah. one you prefer. Okay. Yeah. So the director's cut is what you're going to do your critical Clarity. and Clarity. enjoyment. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, which god or goddess do you find most interesting from that time of uh, Greek mythology? Good. I was going to let you go first because I know you already had the answer in uh, hand for this one because you are a big fan of mythology. I'm going to go Aphrodite. I love her. Aphrodite? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, she does, you know, just the goddess of sexual love and beauty. I mean, she... The Greek goddess of love, beauty, pleasure, and relationships. She often wears a sacred belt that sometimes lends out. Aphrodite was known for her beauty. Yeah, childbearing too. So, I mean, she was... 
I, I look at her and see Poison Ivy too, so I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. The, the in the story, she mm-hmm. was the cause of this war. Yeah. Because there there was a there was a argument between the gods between Aphrodite, Hera, and Athena. Helen. Oh yeah. No, yeah. Hera. Yeah. You're there's right. A, there's an argument between the three of them. And so they went to Paris to say, okay, who is the fairest of the three? Well, they were trying to bribe him. And I don't remember what the other two were bri- bribed him with, but Aphrodite bribed him with, you can have the most beautiful woman in the world, oh. which ended up being Helen. So that's why he chose Aphrodite. And so since Aphrodite, since he picked her, she then said, okay, you can have Helen. Well, Helen was already married to... Menelaus, and so that's what caused all of this mess. Which is actually something I forgot to bring up in the uh, beginning. It's one of my things that I missed. Um, Helen of Troy was known to be the most beautiful woman in uh, the world, basically. She's supposed to be gorgeous. Diane Kruger, do you think that she played it? Ju- do you think she put it to justice of being a gorgeous woman? She had no speaking lines. <laughs> yeah. She had only, a couple lines here and there. She only had a couple lines, so she played it perfectly. Yeah. Do you think she was beautiful, though? Of course. Yeah. Well, here's some actresses that were for that role. I'm curious if you think these would have been better. Oh, even better. Halle Berry? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yes. Kira Knightley? No. Mm, not for this one. Jennifer Lopez? No. No. Mm-mm. Catherine Zeta-Jones? <sighs> yes. Yeah. And then there's one more from Gladiator, Connie Nielsen. No. I don't think she's pretty at all. I've never found Connie Nielsen. No? no? No. She's pretty. I didn't find her pretty right. in Ice Heart. You, you, you missed one. Uh, Katie Holmes also Katie Holmes also tried for it. That wasn't in the list. No. She's too homely. Katie yeah. Holmes? She, she she tried for the for the role of Helen. No, that's probably why she tried out. It, it well, wasn't even in the list. So she probably didn't no. get it. No. <laughs> I can't see her as fucking uh, Helen of Troy. But do you right. think anybody on that list, if you had to pick anybody on the list or just keep Diane Kruger, which one would you pick? Looks like Halle Berry. Halle Berry. <laughs> yep, there you go. Adam? I'd, I'd say probably Catherine zeta Jones at that time. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'd say either one of those you, two. Yeah. I thought Diane Kruger did a good job. I, I thought she was gorgeous. She's well, I'm not pretty, taking it away from her. Pretty, you know. Yeah, I think Halle Berry would have brought a different, and I, I actually both of them, Halle Berry and Catherine uh, Catherine Zeta Jones. Yeah, I think they both would have fucking brought a different, um, different this aura to it. Yeah, you know? since I think they're actually they may have actually had more lines. <laughs> than she did. Jesus Christ! Um, she didn't. She had saying. some. She had probably about like. Ten lines throughout the whole movie, maybe. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, that's all she needed. I mean, they they said he he wanted to pick a, a relatively unknown for her role for that role. Yeah, I think that was one of her yeah. first, and she is a German actress, and she yeah. was in Glorious Bastards, and mm-hmm. she's been in another movie here and there. But um, I think she was gorgeous. I think she was a very pretty woman. I think, uh, but mm-hmm. a lot of people don't think that she was well casted as Helen of Troy. That's why that whole list right there. I, Halle Berry is that's interesting. Catherine Zeta Jones, yes, but Halle Berry, I don't think would have been made a hell of, good Helen of Troy. Why not? I don't know. It's just, it, it just I just don't see it. Why is that? Because you don't know. I just don't see her as a. What, great... what are you trying to? I'm just asking why. That that that's my. I I, don't, I wouldn't see uh, Halle Berry as as a Greek. More more maybe Egyptian or something like that. But I, I just don't see her being represent being a. a, a well, Catherine she doesn't have, to me, does not have the features of a Greek. Catherine Zeta Jones is from Wales, I believe, isn't she? I don't know. Oh, I don't know if anybody knew that. So, but uh, one more uh, question before we do our pint reviews: What is your favorite Greek folklore? Hold up, hold up. Ragnar and Adam didn't answer the favorite god. Thank you. Do we? Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. Yeah, you're right. I it's because I, I moved over. Thank you, Goop. Yeah, you totally. Uh, you correct me. We think. No, I appreciate it. I didn't mean, I even say mine either. I got oh. I got to think a minute. <laughs> All right, Ragnar. Poseidon. That's mine. <laughs> well, that's mine first, so pick another one, motherfucker. <laughs> <sighs> I don't share my gods. <laughs> oh, fuck it. I'll go for the big god. I'll go for Zeus. Zeus, there you go. Poseidon's better. 
Yeah, well, Zeus is uh, he's good with the women. I mean, he Says fucks. Who? He fucks a lot of women. Says <laughs> who? Yes. He likes to be in the beds of a lot of women. I can tell you that. Yeah. Bet you a motherfucker's dick falls off. Oh man. <laughs> he, he's if we're not allowed to pick the same ones. He's a fucker. If I have to go to with a different one, I'd probably say Athena. Athena is oh, the that's Greek a good one. God of wisdom and knowledge. She was born from the head of Zeus. After he swallowed Athena's mother when she was pregnant, she was born fully grown and dressed in armor. Athens, Greece is named after Athena because of her close ties to the city of civilization. And then born got... from his head? That's what it said here. So what did he do? Fucking jerk off? And I have no ski-ski? idea. This is AI. Here you are, honey. Uh, Poseidon is the Greek god of the sea. He is known for the protecting the... The sailors, but he will also inflict his wrath of those who feels has done nothing wrong. He has a love for affair with Medusa. I didn't know he had a love affair with a Medusa who birthed his two children with Perseus and beheaded her. I had no idea. A Medusa? Medusa. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what it says here. And uh, yours was... Um, he kept his eyes closed. Aphrodite, mm-hmm. which we already read out. <laughs> <laughs> over her head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Zeus is the Greek god of the skies. His brothers are Poseidon and Hades. Poseidon is one of the 12 Olympians, while Hades is not. Zeus has three sisters, Hesio, Demeter, Demeter, and Hero. Hera. Demeter. Zeus is, Demeter? Demeter. Demeter. <laughs> Zeus is considered the king of all the gods. And Hera. Yeah, Hera. So he said hero. He said hero. He did say hero, right? I don't have my glasses. I'm sorry. I see an A. It is an A. I thought it was an O. It's Hera. And I just got my glasses today, too. Hestia, I'm not wearing Hestia, it. Yeah. Demeter, and Hera. Yeah. Yes. Three sisters. You guys are just going to keep fucking me up with my fucking eyes. You're fucking yourself up, dude. You have goddamn glasses that you refuse to wear. You play, I, 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 play. I was going to wear them. I just forgot. Why are you? I, you, I just forgot. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How do you fucking forget to wear your goddamn glasses when you need to read? I, I don't know, because I'm dim with it. For fuck's go. sakes, man. I forget things. Anyways, uh, what is your favorite Greek folklore? Thanks, Scoot. You keep nodding your head at me. He's like, this motherfucker doesn't know what the hell he's doing. This is hilarious to me. I'm just laughing. Going with the flow. <sighs> Thanks, Scoot. <laughs> What's your favorite folklore? <laughs> what? Greek folklore. <laughs> What, 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 what's so funny about that? <laughs> oh, the phrasing, brother. God All right, what bless. is your favorite Greek mytho? God, Hercules. I, I love that storyline. Hercules, okay. Adam? Um, I would probably have, have to go with the, the story of the Trojan War. Um, I, I read both the Iliad and the Odyssey years ago. Um... And, and really enjoyed the stories. Okay. Uh, I'd, I'd have probably have to go with the story of the Trojan War. Uh, Perseus and Medusa. I always enjoy that story. It's also the story of Clash of the Titans, which I enjoyed. I enjoyed the original Clash of the Titans. Not the new one. The new one sucks, but the original. But uh, Perseus with the um, with Pegasus and uh, Medusa. That story right there. Ragnar? There's a shitload of them. I think there's like well, there's a bunch. Yeah. I, I was looking at them, and there's so many that I've seen in many, many movies. Because you remember all those movies. Uh, uh, Jason and the, Argonaut, uh, the Argonauts. Great That's fucking movie. Uh, Clash of the Titans. Uh, what's some other movies you know of, Goot, that uh, you grew up with watching? You know, with all the claymation and stuff like that. Odysseus. <laughs> the Clash of the Titans. And the Kraken. Yeah, that, that's a classic movie right there. And the, uh, um, the Metal Owl. What are you laughing at? What are you still- I'm not laughing at anything. I'm fucking looking shit up. You still having a hard time with that one? I am. <laughs> this I wasn't am. part of the questions you uh, originally told me, by the way. No. Well, no, I told you Greek folklore and your favorite god. No. I, I, I remember... Um, it's like fucking Greek mythology movie, I think. Well, there, I mean, there's a lot of movies based on those Greek mythology. Yeah, I know. That's... Clash of the Titans is the one with the uh the I know what it the, is. The winged horse. But like I mean there's a lot like fucking That was really weird, Goot. Perseus, you know, um Your your video, your picture Odysseus. just you're all of a sudden your arm was down here and then it was just back up here. 
Like instant. <laughs> um. Mm. Nah, that's my fault. Maybe I should have prepped everybody for these questions. Mm, give me a minute. Well, while we're waiting for him to do that, we'll go ahead and start our pint reviews. I think you're all ready for pint reviews, aren't you? Yes, sir. Sure. So who wants to go first? Adam. Um, director's Cut. Now, I want you yeah. to give your critical and enjoyment of the Director's Cut, but I also want you to see which one do you prefer, the Director's Cut or the Theatrical Cut? I would say probably the Director's Cut for the story. Uh, theatrical Cut for, for the score. <laughs> I think put the two together. I think that'd be be the best. Um, so if I had to pick one, I'd say probably the, the Director's Cut. Okay. Um, for enjoyment, I'm gonna give it three and a half. It was, it was, it was enjoyable. I, 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 you know, like sitting through and watch it again. Yeah. Like I said, it's been a while since I've watched it. Right. Um, critical. I'm gonna give it a two and three quarters. Ooh. Um, I just, I think they just took way too much away from the mythology of the story. Right. Um, it, it just, there was so much that they, they did away with it. And I understand they had to do it because it was only, they only had three hours to do it. Yeah. But I, I just think they just, they took too many liberties and just did not tell the right story. Um, critically, like I said, it, it was, it was a, good movie to watch and it was it's fun to watch and i'd recommend people to watch it um but critically having to go with what the source material was i i just don't think they did did enough to because of the source material right wow i wasn't expecting that low of a critical from yeah. you but that, there you go goot all right, so if I had to pick between you know theatrical and, and uh, the director's cut, I, I'm gonna go theatrical, man. Because oh wow, okay. I I laugh thinking to myself like, did I gain more from the watching extra thirty minutes to this? I, it's just I, I was like, what did I? There was nothing value to me added. This is more dialogue, and I was just like, god damn, this is dragging. Um, so yeah, I'm going theatrical version for that. Um, enjoyment, I'm gonna go. I'll give it a three for enjoyment. And okay. critical 2.5 critical because there is pros and cons. So the pros to it is this is a fucking just visually stunning epic with, you know, the production values. Like I, I appreciate that kind of stuff. Like yeah. the, the set pieces like that was fucking so well crafted. The uh, costume. The, yeah. Just the little, the little things that make a, a movie good, you know, yeah. just attention to detail was fucking fantastic. The, the battle scenes were very good. I mean, those are not easy to fucking film. Right. The extras, I mean, there's one of the fun trivia. There's a ton of trivia to this movie. The amount of extras involved into it, just fantastic. But this one, the cons go into play. Like, it just, there was a lackluster script to it. Like, you don't feel for these characters. I mean, Hector was, as you said earlier, was who added depth to that character, but I don't, I didn't feel anything for these people. Okay. Um, it was visually impressive, but the battle scenes they, they lacked an emotional weight. Like it was, it was cool to see, but it was like, oh, okay, that happened. And just you know, the dialogue felt like cliche, uh, cliched, and um, it's just I don't know, it was drag sometimes. So you so. felt the director's cut, yeah. So you think the theatrical cut is far <laughs> superior to the director's cut? What did you say? You the said the theatrical, theatrical cut is far superior than the director's cut. Yes, I go with that. Okay. All right. What is your? I was glad to see Sean Bean survive. Well, that's true. One of the very few <laughs> fucking die. movies he does. Yeah. He didn't die. So what is your? I don't think. I don't think it was in his contract yet. <laughs> right. That, his, that he needs to be dead in every fucking movie. Shit, that's <laughs> right. This was released like three years after Lord of the Rings, and but he was known to die in other movies also beforehand. So. All right. What is your favorite uh, Greek mythos? Theseus and the Minotaur. Oh, okay. That's a good one. The maze. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really good mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Um. 
Okay. So your favorite, either the director's cut or no, the theatrical. It's theatrical. Okay. Um, but you're rating the director's cut. So director's cut for critical, it's about two and a half. It didn't really fucking add anything special to watching the extra 30, 45 fucking minutes right. of it. You know, um, yeah, sure, a couple extra fucking added scenes. Uh, some extra shitty score pieces to it. Um, it didn't add anything. It didn't make me feel happy and joyful for, for watching, you know, for three hours and X minutes. Um, it's a good movie. I enjoy it itself. Um, did anybody else notice that when the way Hector died is the way that Menelaus died? Same exact way. Huh. I didn't notice that at all when he uh, stabbed him. Uh... So Menelaus, um, uh, in a way, just bear with me on this one. All right. Um, so Troy, or Troy, fuck. Achilles sliced Hector in the fucking leg, dropped right. him. All right. And then got him straight through the fucking heart. Right. Menelaus sliced Paris in the fucking leg. But Hector stabbed him through the fucking heart. Mm hmm. So it's a little similar, a little different. Interesting. I, I didn't no, I didn't actually I know, I just thought of that. It's, it's <laughs> good call. I don't know if it's fucking true or not. I don't know if it's meant to be. What is to be, what is to be. Um all right, so that was critical. All right, enjoyment for the director's cut, mm -hmm. two and a half. Okay. Um And that's being generous on this one. Because there's inaccuracies in it. Um Things I think that they the just shouldn't have fucking been in there, honestly. Like I said, I enjoy the fucking movie too. So I think they really there's really no need for a director's cut of this one on it. I think it really fucking drops it down a lot. If we did the theatrical version, that'd be different, but we're not. So All right. Well, Mine's is different from all of yours. Um, in my opinion, I think the enjoyment for this movie is a four. I actually enjoy the director's cut. Yes, there are some flaws in the director's cut, but the score. But that's really it. There's music changes that they shouldn't have done. But overall, a lot of the score is still there, and I enjoy the story. I enjoy the extra dialogue. I, I, I'm a fan of director's cuts, and I think that that was what the director intended, and I actually enjoyed his vision. I thought that the extra battle scenes, the brutality, needed to be there. I think the uh, the scenes between uh, um, Helen and Priam that it showed, the scenes between Achilles and Brasilis, all all the scenes right there, I enjoyed. I enjoyed the extra dialogue. I even enjoy. I even thought that the whole scene when uh, Achilles sliced off the head of the statue of Apollo and just starts like be beating on his chest, like yeah, taunting the gods basically. I thought that needed to be there because it showed Achilles. It was like, I don't fucking care what you guys think of me. I'm doing what I want to do. Um, I think that this movie is highly enjoyable. I, I This is one of my favorites, and I have no issues. I mean, not many issues with the director's cut other than the score. But when it comes to critical, that's what brings it down is because of the score issues. So I'd say for my critical, I give it about a three and a half. I think it's a really well-made movie. I mean, the sets... Like Goot said, the sets, the costumes, the um, everything about that just looked beautiful. They did such a great job. I didn't even remember this being nominated for uh, costume design at the Oscars. I don't remember if it was set designer like that, but I thought the shots, especially with a shot of the uh, all the ships going on the water, heading over to Troy, beautiful shot. I think this is a great movie. I think it's fun. The theatrical version did. Huh? The theatrical <laughs> version did. What? It got nominated. Well, yeah, direct, well, I mean, nominated for best costumes, but, I mean, the same costumes are going to be in the director's cut, too, so. Mm -hmm. But the director's cut didn't get nominated. Oh, okay, well, yeah, it's the same movie other than added scenes. It did but... not. For costume design, the Aviator won that year. 
No, it no, no. I'm saying no. I'm saying it got nominated. I didn't it say it nominated. for costumes. It, it got nominated. Not, it did not get nominated. For no, it didn't get nominated design. for anything. For costumes? No, costume design was not there. No, no, no. It didn't get. I thought it got nominated. It did get nominated. I remember it watching the Oscars and seeing it get nominated. Not for costume though. It was like costume design or no. something like that. I'm it looking. got nominated for an award. Hold on, let me see here. Right, I'm looking. Troy. Oscar noms. Two thousand nominee Golden Reel Award Best Sound Editing. Uh, yeah, so it got nominated. Was Troy nominated it- for Oscar? Yes. For sound editing, I remember for costume design because I remember that being shown at the uh, the uh, Oscars. I don't see it here. Four awards and nominations at Troy. Best costume design. Yes. For 2005. Said best costume design, 77th Academy Awards, 2005. Best costume design, Bob Ringwood. Uh, it was nominated. I see the yeah. freaking... Hang on. I see the Aviator, Finding Neverland, Lemony Snickets, Ray, and... Tro- oh, fuck me, Troy. Yeah, Troy. Yeah, that's that's why I, I remember being nominated for costumes. I don't, it, but really, that's all I got nominated for. It didn't get nominated for that much, but still, because it, it, it did have good costume design with the the helmets, the uh, uh, the armor, and everything else, and also like the uh, um, the Troy had almost like that tie dye look on on uh, the shirts and everything. Yeah, it got nominated for that, but uh, that's it. But overall, like I said, a four and a three and a half. I highly enjoy this movie. I wanted to touch on this movie. Yes. A lot of people would probably be say, why would you do the director's cut instead of the theatrical cut? Because I prefer the director's cut. Yes, there's things I don't like in the director's cut that I wish they stuck to in the, from the theatrical cut. But to me, it's, it doesn't take away from the movie. It doesn't take away from the enjoyment of the movie. Um, it just gives like an eye roll or basically like, like oh, they had to do that. All right. And that's, it is what it is. But the movie itself, the brutality, the dialogue, I liked all the added scenes. I think it, it made it a better movie, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, that's that's basically how it is with the uh, with Troy. I, I I appreciate you guys on the different opinions. And I, I knew that this was going to be hit hard with the uh, critical and the enjoyment. I knew that not everybody was for that shit. I had a whole argument with Snow about the whole score thing uh, earlier today about it and how she Eat thought that this... my wife's name out your motherfucking mouth. <laughs> You son of a bitch. She hated this movie. She hated the director's cut because she says the yeah, theatrical cut is far superior. And I, you know, that's what people's opinion are. So, but uh, that's the end of our show for Troy. I think this uh, went really well. What's up, guys? Well, this is a little bonus added to the end of the Troy episode. Uh, Stu could not make it again because you were fucking work because you were stuck at work. <laughs> so another show that he's missed, but. He did watch the movie, and we also have the drink from the Uzo that we got. Which I was looking really Which, forward Snow, to. you can go ahead and say the uh, word that he's supposed to say. Stimiamas. Stimiamas. Stimiamas! So, uh... It's to our health. Yes. So, uh, this is Uzo. This is what Snow brought back over from Greece. And, uh, see how you think? I mean, you brought Uzo. I don't remember mm-hmm. what... I forget which episode it was for, but... Yeah, yeah, and I remember it does a whole fogging up with the ice and everything else, so go ahead and uh, do your review. Thank you. Uh, John Stamos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is nice. Very licorice. That is Very nice. good at plenty, isn't it? Oh, that is so nice. Yeah, you got twos all around mm. on that, by the way. That's yeah. a definite two. That's a definite two. Yeah, that came from Santorini. Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. It it is it, like you, you nailed it. It's good and plenty. It's liquid, good and plenty. Exactly. Um, very dessert type drink. Yeah, it's it's awesome, and it's better on ice. I don't think. It, see, when I looked it up online, it says that uh, Uzo is better on ice, and plus with the whole foggy effect. Because yeah. I remember that happened with the last time we yep. did. I just don't remember which one we did. I can't remember, but I do. I'm, I remember it was. Yeah, I picked it up from Florida. Yeah. So I forget which for what episode of what we were doing it on. So. All right, well, you gave it a two, so there we go. So, actually, I think it's all twos around. So, Snow, thank you. You're welcome. Good job. I'm just glad the glass didn't break in my luggage. (laughs) I had so much shit. All right, so before I ask the question for your pipe reviews of Troy, which one do you prefer, the director's cut or the theatrical cut? 
it's been so long since I've seen the theatrical cut. I can't give you an answer on that. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I, I watched the director's cut. Recently, I bought the fucking director's cut because you insisted on the goddamn director's cut. That's the one I enjoy. So more. had to fucking buy it. I couldn't find it for rent or streaming on anywhere. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, what's your pint reviews? Um, first off, fuck Paris. Of course. Fuck Hector. He's a bitch. Fuck the, their dad. Fuck Helen. Fuck all of them. It's all their fucking fault that all those fuckers died. <laughs> fuck them all. All right? No. Um, horrible, horrible fucking leaders of their country. Uh, protectors of their people. Yeah. Fuck them. All for some pussy. They fucking threw that goddamn shit out. No. You got a no. point. Fuck them. Um, but as far as the movie goes, I thought it was a cool telling of a mythological aspect to a more really realistic view in a real view even now something as simple as him catching the uh, arrow uh to the tendon mm -hmm. and stuff like that um i'm like oh that that's a good way of m how the story could blow up from a simple thing yeah. to th the thing oh he was invincible except for this oh and since he that's how he went down and, and had no other arrows in him yeah then <laughs> well must have been you know godly and i was like this that's cool that's the opening cool. shot the, the shot where it's like going back when you see him on the ground it looks like one of those uh arts on a vase basically yeah. uh it looks great um i thought it was very very well shot uh very cinematic um from start to finish epic um and it accomplished that um so enjoyment and i'm a i'm a huge uh mythology fan mm -hmm. So I always like seeing uh, the the Greek uh, stories. Being you loved Brian screen. Cox, though, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he was fucking perfect. Yeah, he, he had a hell of so time. Yeah. I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, but I appreciated uh, everybody's role um, from uh, from top to finish. Um, I hated the fucking characters that were supposed to be the good guys, though. I fucking hate them. You didn't uh, like you didn't like Eric Bana as Hector? No, oh. because his his ass fucking should have turned the boat around the second. The second oh, so character-wise, you don't like the, the you don't think the actor even did a good job. Oh, at the acting role? was okay. fine, okay. but they were okay. they were all fucking un the, the, who were supposed to be the likable characters. Yeah, were unlikable. Gotcha. All right, um, and even uh, Achilles, Brad Pitt, yeah, douche, fucking douche, super douchey. Um, so I don't think they got what they were trying to get across. Uh, I, I think they were trying to get across, you know, the uh, the people of Troy were the good guys and yeah. the honorable people and shit like that. Right. And the people of the Greek armies were mm -hmm. supposed to be, you know, this, this asshole force and shit like that. Even Brian Cox as the, the, the leader of Greece, he was being, he was doing the right thing. He was uniting the, all the separate tribes yeah. together to become an overwhelming force still letting them rule and run their own fucking uh, country, rolling their own people with the expectation level. Hey, when shit goes down though, fucking send your people to help out. Yep. We all fucking defend each other. Yeah. Um, so even though he was an asshole, let's say, but he was more of an asshole to Achilles because Achilles wasn't understanding. It isn't about one man. It's about the fucking goddamn empire. And yes. The empire is, of course, underneath the king. But so that's a question we yeah. had: is like, who's the villain in this? Uh, really, there's no villains in this. Uh, Everybody's yeah. no, got it's, issues. It's Paris. Paris is the fucking villain. No, Paris is true. absolutely the fucking villain. He's the one who, yeah, yeah. him and Helen yeah. is based on the Helen, ones who fucked Helen, up. Helen, I'm, I'm, I'm a little mad at, but not too much. She was just trying to get out of a fucked up relationship. Yeah. So she took an easy way out. It wasn't her responsibility to worry about these fucking people. Right. It was the fucking ruling family to, ru to rule about the few whole Troy. Okay. Not fucking hers. All right. So, no, it's Paris is the first fucking villain. Yeah. Hector is the fucking second fucking villain. And their dad's the third fucking villain by yeah. letting it all fucking go down. So right. Fuck those douches. All right. Um, Enjoyment, I will probably give it a a very soft four. Um. Uh, it's very soft. It was. It was you were long. the only ones. Uh, you were the only ones. It was too long. The director's cut was. I, I'm assuming. I remember, it was too long. It's like 30 minutes longer. Um, it, it just felt like it went on for fucking ever. It definitely had shit that that needed to be trimmed. Um, and, and I, I'm a very very soft four. Okay. Um, critically, I'm gonna give it uh probably like a three and a quarter. Um, I gave it a three and a half, I believe. So. Yeah, like that, it, it it was too long and it shouldn't need to be cut. Um, the 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 people that were supposed to be the likable heroes were did not come off that way at all. Did you notice the music? Um, 
the music. All right, the scene when Hector and Achilles is fighting. That's okay. the main title to Planet of the Apes. They changed okay. it, but in the in the director's cut, they changed it, and also a couple other scenes they changed the music. But it was still mostly James Horner's score. But then they also grabbed from a couple other movies, and a lot of people have issues with that, including Snow and everything else. What is wrong with you? You can go ahead. <laughs> um, listen, but it was beautifully shot. It was great battle scenes um it did make you feel the scale of everything so i I was like it it accomplished a lot of what it was trying to accomplish yeah um but it it fell flat on other areas so it's not a perfect movie no um and like the the only reason i give it the the enjoyment of the soft four is because how big of a a mythology fan i am yeah um and, and it was really cool take of seeing the shit be told and what how it could have spawned the mythological tales right um in a real world way and i appreciated that all right awesome well, i'm glad to have your review for troy uh me and yours were basically the closest to being that one everybody else had more of lower reviews on i'm it. just more glad to try this fucking uto it's fucking great snow yeah. did a good job bringing that good job so uh that's the end of our uh troy episode i hope you guys enjoyed it and uh we will see you guys later bye